It's the Mixed Martial Arts Hour with... Mixed Martial Arts Hour is back in your life. On this Monday, August 8th, 2022. Hello again, everyone. I sure hope you're doing well. It is a beautiful Monday here in New York City. It is still very hot, just the way we like it. We got a lot to discuss. I hope you had a lovely weekend. Much has happened since we last spoke last Wednesday. A lot to get to today. We love Mondays. We love Wednesdays. We love super stack shows. And that's what you're getting today on the program. Six amazing guests. Like I said, a lot has happened since we last spoke. A lot of fights have happened. Big weekend coming up. So much to get to. Let us not waste any time. And I remind you up the top, as always, we are presented by our good friends over at DraftKings Sportsbook. Yes, DraftKings Sportsbook. And we'll get to a little of that talk in a moment as well. They are the official sports betting partner of the MMA Hour. And I want you to download the DraftKings Sportsbook app today and use code VMMAHOUR for a special offer when you sign up. Again, that's code VMMAHOUR only at DraftKings Sportsbook. All right, what are we doing today on the program? Back end of the show, we're going to have a nice little treat for all of you. Both headliners for this weekend's card in beautiful San Diego, one of my favorite cities in the entire world, a place that I've not been to in quite some time. I think the last time I was in San Diego, I think was Diaz Daily, and that was 11 years ago. Is that possible? I think so. Anyway, I love this weekend's main event. It's a tremendous main event. It's Cheeto Vera against Dominic Cruz. Love it for so many reasons. Love the fact that it's happening in San Diego. Love the fact that it's two of the best bantamweights of all time uh, going toe-to-toe, especially, you know, Dominic Cruz, former champ, legend, first ballot Hall of Famer, who's won his last two in a row. Love the fact that it's Cheeto Vera getting a big opportunity against someone like Cruz in the midst of all these big bantamweight fights happening. Of course, next weekend, 278, we have Marab Dewalishvili against Jose Aldo. Of course, in October, we have TJ Dillashaw against Aljamain Sterling. Of course, we have Sugar Sean O'Malley versus Pierre. Just a lot going on at 135, and it's such a great uh, weight class, so I love everything about it. Uh, Love that it's the headliner. Uh, Vera has been looking great. He's becoming a star in its own right. In his own right, we, we saw when he went back home to Ecuador, he got that hero's welcome. Uh, just love it. So at four o'clock, we're going to talk to Cheeto Vera about the big fight coming up this Saturday. And at 3.30, we're going to talk to Dominic Cruz, a little back-to-back. How about that? Like the great uh, Drake once said. At three o'clock, we'll talk to Juliana Pena, uh, first extended interview since her loss to Amanda Nunez two weekends ago. Talk about the fight. Talk about the cut. Talk about that great stare down with her daughter. Talk about the future, where she goes from here. Uh, she had a big weekend as far as the Ultimate Fighter is concerned. I believe both of her fighters, Mohamed Usman and Juliana Miller, who is quite the character. And uh, I didn't know much about her before all of this, but she she hit her opponent with the uh, the DX crotch chop. Her post-fight press conference was very entertaining. Anyway, we'll talk to Juliana about all of that. That's at uh, 3 o'clock. And then second hour features three of the big winners from this past weekend's UFC Apex event. Uh, Terrence McKinney at 2 o'clock, Jeff Neal at 2.20, and the headliner Jamal Hill at 2.40. Jamal Hill with the big win over Tiago Santos. Had to dig down deep, but uh, a great win. I thought it went on way too long. I don't know what was going on there. Uh, I thought it dragged on way too long, and Santos was was done. He was turtled up. But in any event, mood point at this point, Santos clearly not the same fighter as he was before that John Jones fight. That John Jones fight changed everything in his career, and it wasn't so much the fight itself. It was the injuries that he sustained. Just hasn't looked the same since then. But still a respected name, still a tough out, as we saw on Saturday. Jamal Hill, very much a player in this 205-pound weight class. And you'll recall the last time we had him on, he predicted 2023 he'll be the champ. And honestly, with the way things are at 205, like it's not a crazy thought. There's not a ton. It's not like 55 or 35 where there's there's a ton of killers between where he's at and where the champion sits. I mean, Yuri Prochaska was 2-0 and in the UFC. And as he, Jamal Hill, mentioned in his post-fight press conference, and he has more wins in the UFC than Yuri Prochaska. Prochaska had two very solid wins, but got fast-tracked. 
So we'll talk to him about that. Jeff Neal had a phenomenal win over Vicente Luque. Looked better than he has in a while. Looked like the Jeff Neal who was doing big time work before he got sick. Um, so happy for him. And Terrence McKinney continues to be one of the bright young stars in the UFC. Great personality, super young, super entertaining as well. Afterwards, he called out Patty Pimblett. I'm fairly confident they wouldn't make that fight anytime soon. Not so much because of Patty, by the way, but I think they, you know, they ain't booking Terrence McKinney with Patty Pimblett, let's be honest. Um, would be fun. And I think Patty would take the fight, but I think the UFC wouldn't make it. Anyway, good to see him bounce back after the loss to Drew Dober. You'll recall, we thought that he was going to win that fight against Drew Dober, and it looked like for a second he was going to uh, pull it off, but then, I don't know, maybe he got a little overzealous, and he took that fight on short notice, and uh, Drew Dober was able to uh, beat him in the first round. So he rebounds with the win over Eric Gonzalez. So that's all coming up. Like I said, super stack, six guests, a lot to get to. A lot to uh, discuss with these fine individuals. But we did have a big weekend. Uh, the team actually had a, uh, a little outing, if you will, a field trip, if you will. And I do want to mention that uh, we're, we're a man down today and perhaps for the foreseeable future, BJG, Big Joe Greenstein, uh, out for, or Stein, excuse me, uh, out for uh, a little bit, got into an accident, unfortunately. And so we wish him the best. The show isn't the same without him. I'll tell you that much. He's a huge, massive part of the show. Um, and so he is at home recovering and we miss him dearly and hope that he makes a very speedy recovery so that he can come back and rejoin us. Um, really, really bummed, but glad that he's okay and will hopefully make a full recovery prior to him getting into an accident, unfortunately, this weekend. The whole squad went to the PFL on Friday at the Hulu Theater. Could you believe that? And not only did we go, it was my first MMA event live since March 2020, UFC 248. Uh, that was the card headlined by Israel Adesanya versus uh, Yoel Romero, Las Vegas. Of course, I'd been to boxing, I'd been to wrestling, not MMA. And uh, I do think we have to thank the good people at PFL. Been a long time since I went to an MMA event and just watched it. Didn't work it. Uh, they rolled out the red carpet for us. They've got this VIP thing that they have people sit in the front. You get free food and all that stuff. It's not bad. It's not bad. Sitting there up against the cage, taking it all in. It was a good time. So I uh, wanted to talk to the guys about their experience. Also, we have to recap our our parlay, uh, we're now 3-0. and That's three weeks in a row. And weirdly enough, not hearing so much from the uh, the boo birds, the curse birds. You know, you get one wrong. Oh, you're cursed. Oh, oh, you don't know what you're doing. Oh, where are those people now? I mean, we're just crushing it. And a lot of people are saying it's because of Frank. Frank, how do you feel? Three in a row. I mean, this is big. exciting. Massive. So let's start with PFL, shall we? Uh, we have the guys here. I mean, New York Rick was actually the lone member of the squad who didn't join us, but uh, you were watching from afar. I heard somewhat jealous of the outing, yes? Oh, I, I wish I was there, but I, I, I was working. Uh, the, the, the card that you were watching, I yes. was working, but uh, um, yes, I am jealous. I wish I was there. I have some friends there. It would have been... Oh, yeah. We saw Jeff. We saw Diego, the legend, PFL guys. Yes. We saw everyone. Yeah. We saw everyone. Everyone was there. They Who were else? asking about you, Rick. They were. I'm I'm gutted. I, I, I really wish... They asked, why didn't you come? I mean, there was a media row there. They said, why yeah. didn't you come? You, you could have put your laptop there. up there. You could have sat right in front of us. You could have sat next to Liver King. We saw Liver King yeah, there. Liver he King was right was... next to the media section. I right. mean, he stole the show. You. I mean, you have to preface that liver king came in late came in and late as, as he was walking down people were mobbing him you couldn't even see him all the security around him i was like who is that and then he gets to the bottom of the stairs and pops out liver king shirtless no shirtless shirt on. full gimmick full backwards gimmick. hat long hair long beard no shirt super tan just sitting there chilling looking great got the interview on air on, on air. espn plus afterward and got mobbed dude the guy probably took a hundred pictures that night I thought it was amazing that he was so well received. People love it. I thought it was a little weird when Frank asked him for a selfie. I was like, yes. "Wow, Frank! Yeah. I didn't I even had know." To, uh, call my shot. Yeah, I didn't know that uh, you were such a big fan of Liver King. 
Um, so yes, everyone was there. Frank was there. His wife, his lovely wife was there. Uh, GC there, his roommate, Joe. Uh, Corporate Alex was there as well. And uh, so now, so this completes uh, the Quarfecta? Is it a uh, wait, wait, Quadfecta? Wait. Quadfecta. Yeah, so, the four, LFA, Bellator, PFL, and UFC. Okay. All Rank them. the em. last six months. Rank them. Rank them. Um, UFC won uh, PFL 2 by a mile because of our seats. You said food? Yeah. That was an understatement. Putting it like that was an understatement. Those were like Tell us, what do we have? What do we have? Those were adores. <laughs> what was it? The uh the ribeye crostinis. Yes, yes. Those were unbelievable. The what else sliders. Did we have? The sliders, sliders were really were good. Chicken quesadilla. Super chicken well done. Because yeah. but the thing about the chicken quesadilla, there was like a cilantro crema sauce that went with it. This yes. wasn't just like <laughs> slapping some tortillas together. It was unbelievable. Good. All you could eat, uh like mini Franks, the pigs in the blanket. They were. It, it was flowing like water. Every, I mean, in between rounds, couldn't even. We were turning. I yeah. am I breaking down the fourth wall here? If I mention uh, Anthony Pettis was just starting, his wife was sitting behind us. Behind. No, go ahead. That's part of the experience. Me and you are sitting in the corner, and we're like, "Hey, could I just get a slide?" Yeah, I know. I know, I know. <laughs> she's she's like sweating bullets, so scared for her husband, and we're like, hey, "I'll take another yeah, slider." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right Can here. you come over here with the sliders, please? Uh, uh, you sliders got- are fantastic. Spring rolls. Spring rolls. Uh, uh, all you can drink for those that indulge, private bar, private bathrooms. I mean, it was, it was top of the line. We were cage side too. I got pictures here. I got. Oh, I got what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Uh, you know, there. Oh, look at that setup. Seats. I mean, look at how close we were. I I didn't know that about the PFL. They do like the four things like leading up over the cage. What are you, you talking know, about? Like the four the things. Steel. Oh, right frame. there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and then we got you know the squad. Squad there. Frank. Oh, Frank, look great. Thanks. Look great. Dude. <laughs> Uh, we have to mention on the left there, we have uh, Frank's... Uh, you didn't blur out Frank's wife. Why, why I actually asked him. I said, do you want to keep the identity secret? He goes, no. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Only concerned about himself. Very self-serving guy. Yeah, they brought us out there. They gave us the passes. We were sitting in the front. I mean, we were really loving life. I got to meet Don Davis, who's like yeah, the I mean, you president. Getting... I was being I was being paraded around. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's that was uh, the word. Peter Murray brought me to hey, the front. I saw Faraz, I saw OAM, Pride of Montreal, got the uh the 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 stamp to the finals. Uh I think everything was great. Would it be fair to say everything was great, but the fights were a little bit fights were a little lackluster, yeah. yeah. Uh that first fight. First, the first, first fight was sick. Rob Wilkinson shout out. Mm-hmm. Um OAM, the shout out. I'm sorry, I still blown away by that yeah yeah uh marcelo nuno is getting these things happen into the car knees get thrown to the face <laughs> why I mean, it only happened away? once <laughs> right with such a consequence for the entire i have car. a question for frank do you have a greater appreciation now of mma now that you've seen it up close yeah yeah i would say so. like I mean, something that may feel like a mundane mo- moment move like a kick to the stomach or a kick to the leg Hearing the pops and yeah, that's great. Yeah, seeing the the red on the skin from how hard they got hit. I mean, yeah, I, I think the more that I watch, the more you pick up on those nuances where you know you could just feel how heavy they were just right. moving around the cages, like geez, you know. So it was definitely a it, it's changed the scope of things. Big Joe told me that the thing that really stuck with him was uh, the length of the round. Like when you're sitting there and watching someone yeah, go five clock, minutes, yeah, right. like, geez, this goes on forever. It never uh, ends. Speaking of going on forever, two things. One, the ambulance fiasco. Oh my God! Oh, Tell us about great, this. Bro. Tell us about this. I mean, I've never seen this before. Who was it? It was. It was the Rob Wolf. The yeah. Fight. First they fight. both get into the cage. In the cage. Every, everybody's hyped, ready to go. We're waiting for them to announce it, uh, and then nothing happens, and they just kind of stand there. And I'm sure they were letting people know immediately on TV, uh, but probably three or four minutes went by before they announced over the arena PA system, and they were like, uh, "Yeah, we're waiting on an ambulance right now before we start the fight." Second. So, like, ambulance yeah. yeah second ambulance so please just be patient uh but yeah that was a now i saw a lot of people giving pfl crap for this i believe that's a new york state athletic commission yeah blunder well, the athletic commission with the marcelo yeah marcelo nunez who was supposed to be the back. second fight um gets pushed to the post limb main event because they saw a birthmark on his arm according to his coach captain eric who i also saw there captain eric albaracin uh former friend and foe now friend again of the program uh, and he told me that they had to call up the Nevada State Athletic Commission <laughs> and uh, ask them about it because he fought their contender series. And they said, no, 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 he had it back then, too. So then they cleared him. He fought at the end and ended up winning. 
Uh, so that was a weird one. The, the ambulance thing, I really felt bad for the fighters because they're, you know, you're adrenaline, you're getting all, and you're literally standing there for three, four extra minutes just watching your opponent yes, going back and right. forth like a caged animal. Also a sober reality that one of them could need that second that's ambulance. That's true. Yeah, I didn't even think like of that, that, Frank. I feel like that's kind of, it is reality. Joe hit the uh, like plus 1,000 parlay. Nailed it. Nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. Uh, speaking of which, there was an awkward moment. Should we discuss it? Um, where I think... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, this you, is the, the Frank debacle. I, I want to hear. What, whatever this is, so, I want to hear it. So, so GC's killing it. I mean, you won everything up until Pettis, correct? Well, yeah, but I, I only had the one parlay. So I won the parlay. Was what was it? It was... OAM. OAM, Wilkinson. Rob Wilkinson. Nunez hadn't gone yet. I was just assuming he was going to win. Yeah. Small bets. Small yeah. bets because PFL is dangerous. Uh, I was pretty much guaranteed a winning night at this point. Pettis loses, and I'm just kind of chilling there. Wait, before uh, you get to that uh, point, uh, though. Sure, sure, sure. So sure, sure. Connor's sitting to my left. He's wanting Pettis to win. Joe was sitting to my right, and he had picked Ray. So I made a joke Stevie about Ray, huh? feeling like I was kind of being, you know, like which, which side is going to be the, the celebration going to go on. Then Joe had gotten up before the fight ended. <laughs> so I think it was, um, now you can pick up the story, but I had nobody to turn to on my right to be like, high five. So Got it. This is also, what I, did I did text the whole team, by the way, uh, New York Rick. I told them, hey, like for this one, let's keep the cheering to a minimum because Pettis' wife is sitting right behind us. I mean, like she, you can, yeah. you see the- That'd like, be appropriate. Yeah, we have to be, I mean, we have to- or, Order a few sliders, but don't don't jump out of your seat. Order a few you know. sliders. I mean, Frank at this point was on beer number six, seven. I mean, he was stacking them. <laughs> yeah, How many a, in total? He had a Frank? graveyard under his feet. How many in total would you say, Frank? Uh, like three, I think. Yeah, right, three. <laughs> it was three when there was- Three like at one time, yeah. Under his feet. Uh, all right, so yeah, he, uh, Frank turns to me and he like, consoles me, like puts his hand on my knee, <laughs> looks me directly in the eye like a disappointed <laughs> father or something. And he's like, hey man, I, I, I just wanted to say, I, I'm really I'm really sorry about it. And I was just like, I was like, come on, man. I was like, don't do that. I was like, I didn't just lose my life savings. Like, it's gonna be okay. Like, th you're making me feel like worse about losing You got really mad about this. I, I wouldn't say I got snippy, mad. Yeah. I thought, I I thought just, you got mad. You were like, Frank, I don't need, I don't need your condolences right now. I don't think I don't think I said that aggr that aggressively. I was like, "Oh, come on, dude!" I was like, "Don't do that." <laughs> and uh, I was like, "It's not that bad." And like, I'm kind of laughing now, with him. Go ahead, go ahead, Rick. In the moment, in the moment, I'm sure that's that's brutal, right? You don't want to think about the loss again because you, you're moving on. You're like, "This is small potatoes." We're we're moving on. And he's yeah, I really wasn't that bothered. Him. I really wasn't that bothered. But yeah, and, but he was like but, consoling me, like I just took like yeah. a heavy hit. <laughs> I get that. Now though, in now now that we've had some time to breathe, now that the loss is is far behind us, we got a, a few extra dubs. Frank's just a good dude. He's just trying Thanks. to he's just yeah, trying to Yeah, I even heard pal. Ariel say, "Well, he's just trying to be nice." Yeah. Well, the <laughs> thing is, yes, he was he was trying to be nice and we kind of laughed it off and we were joking around. The funniest part of the story is like 10 to 15 minutes later, he like comes up and gets like very, you know, man to man one on one. He's like, "Hey man, I I just wanted to apologize about <laughs> Sorry to you earlier. He was apologizing for the apology. It comes in two. Yes. And I was like, dude, you don't have to do that, man. Let's just move on from this. Well, the thing what? is, what? he he apologizes after the Anthony Pettis one, which like essentially didn't matter to me. It was a very small bet. But then Brian Ortega on my birthday, that like completely crushed me. I was like sitting dumbfounded for like 20 oh, minutes yeah, after the one. fight. And, uh, you know, uh, Frank just starts making shoulder jokes the entire <laughs> way home. Is just like laughing about it. He's just like, oh, whatever. Like, but then, you know, we get the small potatoes and he's like consoling me, grabbing my neck. If you didn't have uh, nine beers in you, Frank, would you have said the same thing? Yeah, well, I mean, th what I was actually upset about is that I, I don't know, I, I just misread the situation. I shouldn't have said anything. I, feel I mean, like I should have maybe was, turned over to Pettis' wife. Was okay. and done I was going to say, just, <laughs> imagine you turned <laughs> over to Pettis' wife. I'm so sorry. Hey, I mean, she would have like, gotten Put your hand day. on her knee. I'm really sorry about what just happened. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Frank's a sensitive soul. I can appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, the Ortega heel turn, though, that, that changes my mind about it a little bit. Just I, again, how, you had to be, he was like the whole ride home. He's like, I don't trying pop to rub your it shoulder in. out. I was just like, it was you know just what? the way that the, UBS Arena like cleared out. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. it, was just, it was just bad. Speaking of clearing out, it's, everyone stayed for the post limbs. I didn't even know it was the post limbs. It was very impressive. They never really made the announcement, but first of all, 
The one thing I'll say is when you do shows on cable TV, it just doesn't flow as fast, right? There's so many commercial breaks. It's, I mean, it's, what I hate is the commercial break before they read the scorecard. Um, I hate that because it just feels like it takes forever. Uh, Wilkinson had the best performance of the main card. Very happy for OAM. He's now going to fight uh, Stevie Ray in the um, in the finals of the 155 tournament. So overall, I mean, you know, nice little show for them. But then you get to the post limbs. Everyone stuck around, A, because there were some local guys, but B, what was great about the post limbs was no commercials, right? Those were just on plus. And those felt like, you know, they went by a little quicker. But overall, I have to say, like, Hulu Theater was packed. I don't know how many of those was- they were you know giving away and how many were bought whatever but i was shocked how many people were there. yeah there was a nice little crowd for new sure. york showed up well done uh so frank you enjoyed it i thoroughly enjoyed myself so thanks again what did you okay so you rank your shows <clears throat> i uh to be honest because of the seats and the turnout i oh. i preferred the pfl to wow. the UBS arena. i mean free yeah. food and everything but it was connor's birthday at ubs so they had a different oh, feel did have a different feel uh, we were all wondering, what's up with Pettis? What's up with Pettis? It just felt like he was stuck in neutral the whole time. And then we find out that he had two broken hands Yeah, per his Instagram. What do you think happens to Pettis now, Rick? Is he done? No, nah, I don't think he's done just because, I mean, if you're in the playoffs, you wh- why not try to run this back again next year? You know, breaks go a little bit better, li- literally, like your hands don't break, and you get to the finals. Like, Well, he announced If on- I was Pettis... He announced on Wednesday, he's right? Agent. That he's a free agent. Gets pay, paid a pretty penny. I do think he brings in eyeballs, right? People still like Pettis. But what's his record in PFL now? Like one, one and four. four? Yeah, one and four. Yeah. I, I would imagine that PFL has to get him at a, at a different rate if they get him. But if I'm Pettis, I'd be angling to go straight back. Why not? Just just keep running back in these tournaments. They seem like the, the fastest way to money at this point in, uh, in MMA. Well, look at the dudes who are in the finals, right? OAM. Yeah. Stevie Ray out of the game for two and a half years. Uh, Wilkinson, right? And who am I missing? Who's the other guy that uh, made it to the finals from two, from the uh, 205? Akhmedov. Akhmedov, yeah, who beat uh, Josh yeah. Silvera. All these guys, you know, wait, uh, all four former UFC fighters who are like on the bottom, and now they have a shot at a million dollars. I saw, you know, our friend Shaheen saying this, but he's 100% right. Like, if you're... A UFC fighter who's, or an ex UFC fighter who's deciding between like a Bellator and PFL, just for the ceiling, maybe not for the exposure, maybe not for the attention that you get, whatever, but just for the ceiling as to how much you can make in a calendar year, it's kind of a no brainer, right? A yeah. A million dollars. It's a quick, well, not only that, but I think people forget this because the focus is so much on the tournament check, but like you're also getting purses. Like it's not like it's just leading to a million dollars. Like you're getting paid a good, a good amount for your normal. Uh, show and win purse or show purse, you know, depending on on how you've arranged that, and then you're getting a crack at a million dollars. So yeah, I think it's a. I if you if I was a UFC fighter in the ten to fifteen range, it's something I consider where I think about like maybe this is somewhere I I could have a, a quicker route to money. Now again, money's not the only factor here, right? If you're a fighter in the ten to fifteen range, you may be thinking, okay, I can get into the five range and then I can get the championship. Like there's there's certainly different ambitions for different fighters. But if you're if you're thinking dollars and cents, man, PFL's got a, an interesting um, appeal, I, I think, for fighters in that fringe. All right, so that was Friday. We had a nice time. It was great. Unfortunately, we found out our, our friend got into an accident afterwards, so that kind of put a damper on everything afterwards. But uh, we hope that he makes a speedy recovery and that all is well and that it seems like he will do so. But, you know, scary stuff. Um, we love you, Big J. Uh, then we get to Saturday. And the freaking Parlay Boys hit. What's our group name, by the way? Parlay Pals? What's our name? We are Parlay Parlay Pals. Pals. And it started. I thought it was ATM. Oh. Wow. Wow, we're getting cocky now. We're getting super cocky. And my wife is always like, I just love when you say that. Well, a a great card that was, I mean, I thought maybe criticized a little too much by the likes of Connor and whatnot. I mean, you were just killing it on uh, No Bets Bard and whatnot. Uh, MMA History (laughs) Today reminded us. First event in eight years that had a 100% finishing rate. It's now part of only 10 events in UFC history with 100% finishing rates. The other nine cards, UFC 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, Ultimate Ultimate 96, UFC 40, Tough 5 Finale, and Fight Night 55. So all fights, all 10, right? All 10 fights on the card ended in a finish. 
And it was a very entertaining card. But of course, the big story was Frank hitting it again. But this time, Frank, first fight of the night, right? Or was it the first? Or, no, second, second fight. fight. Yeah, yeah, the, the first was third. third fight of the night. Yeah. Okay, it was early, though. Very Corey early. Was, he was also first to go in the park. That's what I meant. Yes, that's what I meant. Your boy, uh, Brian Battle. Yeah. So you could just you just watch and then you were able to put your feet up. Actually, weren't you at church or something? Yeah, that was the problem. Mm. Um, <laughs> so I much for my uh, fights to start very quickly. Uh huh. Um, and they were not. So I'm actually at this church with um, my phone on, trying to watch. Wow. <laughs> and why then, were you and at you church? Guys, uh, so I went to a, a musical event. It was oh. it was really nice. Thanks for asking. Uh -huh. And um, at one point, because you guys were texting. I was getting too anxious about how is this going to turn out. I just turned my phone off, which I never do. Wow. So after the end of the show, when I turned my phone on and I saw that we had already hit two, I was like, man, that, that totally is going my way. So, I mean, I missed the Brian Battle thing happened so fast. I was at City Field, you know, watching my Braves mm. uh, Good get weekend destroyed by the Mets. Yeah, not great. <laughs> uh, I looked up to watch a pitch, and when I looked back down, Sato was on the ground. It like happened. It was just. I like this so battle it's character nice with his hair. Calling out Ian Gary. Dropped Pooh Bear, too, supposedly. He dropped what? Did he really? Yeah, yeah he's, he supposedly said afterward that he doesn't want to be called Pooh Bear anymore. Really? I thought the maybe nicknames spreading, or something. Maybe, maybe I'm spreading you know. fake news. I read that somewhere on Twitter. Well, it wouldn't be the first time <laughs> fake news is spread. Uh, Frank comes in earlier today, uh, New York Rick, and says, wow, did you hear the news? Uh, what do you think? I of, didn't say it like that. I you assumed you were you. He said... Oh, this is the best. I can't believe I, I'm 30 minutes into the show and didn't bring this up. He says, Triple H announced that they're going back to WWF, not WWE. I was like, oh, wow. Uh, I don't think that's true. I mean, there was a whole... Like, well, a while I found out. Yeah, yeah, there was a whole lawsuit. But I was like, no, no, no. I saw it on Reddit. I saw it on Reddit. So I go on Google and I type this in and it's like some BS website that says Triple H is changing... <laughs> <laughs> but he was 100% certain that this was true. So I was like, no, this can't happen. Oh, I always thought it was, what did you think it was, WFF? Yeah, I thought the, the WFF was the wildlife thing. It was sort of like he was coming in here, and I appreciate it. By the way, I just want to let you know, I appreciate it. He was trying to make conversation. Like, oh, did you hear, yeah, yeah. you know, his water cooler talk. Did you hear Triple H? You know, he's changing it back to the WWF, which would be great. Never really liked WWE. And then on top of that, Connor then says he spent 45 minutes at lunch going down the rabbit hole. No, not at lunch this morning. I got I had to go to the dentist this morning, so I got here extra early. <laughs> tell tell me what you said. Right. Tell me what you said. Someone tweeted a video of Bret Hart. Yes. Uh, someone asking them asking Bret Hart if he liked Bill Goldberg. No, that's all you said. That's all you said. You said Mike Goldberg super kick Bret Hart. <laughs> <laughs> He said was it was it Bill Goldberg? Did you say Mike Goldberg? <laughs> I probably did say you Mike said Goldberg. Mike Goldberg. <laughs> said, I went down the rabbit hole of the Mike Goldberg Bret Hart wait, story. Wait, wait, I was like, hold on. wait, well, what Mike Goldberg Bret Hart story? I'm hold on, but, oh, it was, tremendous. but it was just Bill Goldberg. <laughs> yes, two different people. That's the only thing that I mistake. Yeah, there's a huge mistake, difference though. between Mike Goldberg and Bill Goldberg. Okay, all right, okay, this is yeah, as Mike, bad as Mike I thought it was then. <laughs> Mike just, Goldberg in our world is somebody though. That's that's. The, I just flipped two thing. names. I, that's. I mean, what are you? No, but for, do here? The, I thought it was just like completely false. What I was watching was just like not true at all. <laughs> okay, all right. I just messed up no, Mike no, no. and Bill because you didn't even say the part about the super kick. You just said you went on the rabbit hole of the Mike Goldberg Bret Hart story. So then I was trying to think like, what is he talking about? When Mike Goldberg was gonna leave the UFC and go to WWE, there was a story where they were trying to recruit him. <laughs> And then you mentioned the super kick, so I was like, oh, you're talking about Bill Goldberg. But you never corrected yes. him, yeah. Well, I wanted to save it for yeah, the show. Could've, you yeah. couldn't have corrected him. You wanted to sit on this so for this 45 time, minutes. Just Connor sitting there questioning reality. <laughs> Flip the names. Oh, so good. Well, both of you just, I, I appreciate Freudian both of you. slip on me, you know? I admit way, that I had the bigger screw on. I appreciate both of you trying to watch pro wrestling and, you know. No, I didn't try and watch pro wrestling. You, you spent 45 minutes on yeah, Goldberg and Bret Hart. Time. Killing time. Was it the A&E biography? No, it was just random YouTube videos. By the way, if you're looking for more on that story, a &E biography on Bill Goldberg, really good. Mm -hmm. Bret Hart still holds a grudge. And it is true. Yeah, it did end yeah. his career. Yeah. Kicked okay. him in the head. Yeah. So so everything I said. He Except for the Bill Mike. I didn't want to be like, oh, you, you mean Bill instead of Mike. And I would have said, too oh, good. Yeah, 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 my fault. Too my good. Fault. Too good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you were cackling. I'm just picturing like, I, I Mike Goldberg dying. feuting. I was dying. Well, first I was thinking. Picturing of Mike Goldberg feuding with. Bret Hart. Yeah. I'm just, that's great.
That's I great. thought I was like saying something like the sky is purple. And like, you also have to understand this is literally two minutes after, you yeah. know, Frank Waltz is in here and is like, did you hear about the WWF Triple H? I don't, even, so like, I don't even think it was two minutes. I think I care. I think I piggybacked off of what Frank was saying. <laughs> so it was just back to back. Um, anyway, back to the event. So we get Brian Battle with the big win. So Frank is just chilling, 44 seconds, chilling. Then Michal Olekshechuk, right? Uh, that's Rick, just chilling. Yeah. Poor Sam Alvey, who, by the way, uh, Sam Alvey broke his jaw, apparently. I think it's now nine in a row, yeah. right? Nine, nine in a row. Nine in a row, winless. Winless, I think yeah. eight losses, so 0-8 and 1. Uh, and then I see yesterday morning, he's writing on my TikTok page. I don't know if you guys have seen my TikTok page. just on fire lately. Yeah. He's don't like, hey, man. He wrote, welcome to TikTok. Let's do an interview soon. I was like, wow, is this Sam Alvey? Then I go on Sam Alvey's page. Sam Alvey's killing it on TikTok. Oh, yeah. I have Did you guys know that? I've seen a couple things, yeah. Oh. Uh, you knew this, Eric? He did something with the, uh, yeah. the Paul brothers. There's... What? I guess I don't spend any yeah. time on TikTok. Um, if you're if you're an entertainer, uh, influencer, an athlete, and you're spending time on a platform, TikTok's a good one to build the audience. So yeah, Sam is uh, capitalizing. I had no idea. Anyway, he gets starched. You have to think this is the end of the Sam LV experience, right? To. I mean, you have to. If he comes back for another one after all of this. There's got to be more to this story. Like there has to be some handshake deal in the back. I'll say the one thing I'll say about it is, I mean, we give it the attention, right? We're talking about it. Like ESPN did like a whole like 10,000 words. They did a feature on him. Ryan Hawkins Smith did a feature on him. If we're talking about it, that means that people are caring and paying attention. So I, I mean, you think he comes back? I would hope that I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. That would be so I really crazy. don't. That would be so crazy. It's a. It's not a great look. Let's just call it I mean, what it is. It's you not have a great to look. Perform if, at the level of the league that you play. In. There has. Like, there has to be a performance. And these aren't even close fights. It. No. No. It's been Sam a. Sam Alvey. This one was not. It, it was like Oleg Sechek just came out there and was like, "I'm here to knock this." I'm dude. sorry. He just yeah. started throwing bombs. Sam Alvey, Jake Paul, who wins boxing? I'd love to see it. Oh, so really? Jake wins, it. right? I think yes. so. Yeah. Yes, okay. Jake wins. Uh, we'll get to him in a moment. Then Terrence McKinney with the big win over Eric Gonzalez. He said it took too long, took 217. I see a lot of people giving me crap for, you know, picking the minus 850, whatever. Listen. Who cares? I don't care. We okay. set the rules, minus 999 or better. I don't care. We're hit, we are hitting four leg parlays. I yes. do not care what people say about the price. Get out of here with this nonsense. We're it's th- either you kill me for the underdogs. I'm trying to pick underdogs for you. Now I'm telling you, all right. And this is, what, what, what was it at? It was plus 147, right? Yeah, Suck don't care. Out. Do not care. Like four leg parlays don't just like they are somewhat difficult to hit. Like and we've now hit three in a row. Yeah, my less than minus a thousand. That's the only rule we have in place. I saw someone say like less than minus three hundred. I was like, no, nah, just no. What? That's crazy. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, someone was like, these are too easy. It's like the four leg parlays are not if, easy. Yeah, if they're less than minus three hundred, then we might as well start making straight bets. Like, why are we? Why are you even parlay at that point? This yeah. that'd be that's silly. So then Take we, the money, people. Shut up. Spivak with the win. Miller yeah. with the win and the DX chop. Usman with the win. He's terrifying. Jeff Neal with the huge win. And then we get to the main event. And all the pressure's on you, GC. I know. Were and you I, sweating? I felt that one for you. I was, I was getting nervous for you. I was nervous. And then the fight started and I got 10 times more nervous because it's just like Tiago Santos just makes fights like if you are betting against him he just makes fights nerve-wracking for you like i just like i thought he might do it i i haven't looked at the scorecards but like i feel like some of the judges had him up to one going into the third going into the fourth and like i was just imagining it going to a decision and like losing 48 47 oh Oh my god it would have been it would have been so disappointing especially after all three of y'all's got first round finishes yeah he had to dig down deep but it was a great performance. Do you, again, moot point, but I actually was surprised that people didn't agree with this. That went on way too long, no? I was in my apartment, like, square dancing. I was, like, <laughs> jumping up and down, like, hitting my foot on the ground. I was, like, screaming, like, Herb, please stop the fight. Please stop the fight. What is going on here? Way too long. And then when you see that video early in the night, courtesy of Boa Shinya Depot, that he's doing cameos cage side. I mean, I like Herb Dean. How is that appropriate? Do you guys see that? I did. I did I Do you know did. what cameo is? Cameo, yeah. Yeah. He's doing a cameo while at the fights. 
That's pretty crazy. You pr- honestly let me, me get going. I, I want to give a counterpoint. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you, counterpoint. You say it let me just say something. I actually think an official shouldn't have his phone for the entire night. How about that? Mm. You get a bad call, you get back, you sit in your chair. Oh yeah, and people start. Twitter phone. kills you. Now you're starting to like. I'm actually shocked that they're allowed to have phones for the entire night. Yeah. How about that? Let they're, alone they're so- doing cameos. By the way, I'm on cameo. It's a fun little thing. Wow. You should That's not be doing cameos. I mean, you should not be doing cameos. No uh, way. Before your counterpoint, I, Rick, I do just have to say, and I know a couple people that were on this, bad beat of the night might be in contention for bad beat of the year. The under three and a half, it ended one second over that. Oh, wow. Ooh. And it, Herb had it all in tw- hands. Oh, That's that makes saying. it even worse. Herb, Herb had Herb had the over three and a half for sure. Wow. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. He's like, careful. He's like, that is a big hit. that is a big accusation right I there. Mean, it's careful, careful. He obviously did not have that. What's the counterpoint? The counterpoint is okay. No counterpoint to I I kind of like your idea about not having phones cage shot. That's the uh, uh, throughout the night. I, I kind of like that. My counterpoint is if you are somebody who purchases a cameo from Herb Dean. <laughs> <laughs> is that like the that's the best you're gonna get right like it's like he's in the I like that the yeah arena, the cage the, side the yeah, yeah. that's going crazy I'd like, rather you know, have a good Herb in the apex than in his house right like it, the alternative is you just purchase a cameo from Herb Dean and he's sitting in his computer chair and sitting, yeah like, if I'm you know, Joe Smith from Indiana I think it's the coolest thing yeah. of all time yeah yeah, yeah. that's my point it's highly inappropriate though don't you think it's inappropriate yeah, that I'm would not, be I'm not he's arguing probably got access to the apex on off days how about this. If we're rating his performance, he gets an A plus for cameo, Ugh. and he gets a lower grade for refereeing that night. That's all. That's yeah. that, that's how that we'll grade it. But he's trying yeah. to give value. I still like Herb. He's trying to give value. Listen, I've always liked Herb, but I have to say it's a bad look. It would be like me doing the show and being like, "Guys, give me right forty five seconds and doing like it's just inappropriate." But how much would that person who got it <laughs> love it? Yeah, yeah, yeah love it. that is true. <laughs> By the uh, way, that person would have loved it if he was in the back. You know, hey, I'm just I leaving think the that's apex. Fair. I think- I think that's fair. Great night of fights, blah, blah, blah. Speaking yeah. of refs, the PFL ref cam. Oh, yeah. You like it? Oh, love that. I mean, it was definitely interesting. Is Has UFC ever entertained something like that? Uh, Pride used to have it. Okay. But not UFC. Just had to ask. Uh, I do have an announcement to make. Oh, wow. You approached, this, approached me about this last week. Uh, I said when we hit another... MMA hour parlay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd officially be on board. Oh, wow. Let's circle the way. We, we now. got the ticket right here. Na, 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 na. Na, na, na. Wow. This is big. I didn't know this was happening. I am riding with Bill's Mafia plus 600. I was hey, just going to put 100 hey. flat, but I was like, you know what? The parlay's been treating us well. Let's get the total payout up to 1,000. Uh, so so what is it? I can't, even, I can't read that. Buffalo Bills plus 600. I put 142 down to return 1,000. Wow. Yeah. To win the Super Bowl. To win the Super Bowl. And not only that, I'm going all in. Oh, you bought the pants? pants? I got the pants. Wow. The way. I'll be waiting for me when I get home today. Holy smokes. Where do you get them from? Amazon. Wow. The Zubaz pants. Look at you. So does this mean you're not a Falcons fan this year? While they're in the mud, while they're struggling, you know, building up draft picks and everything, I will be You're rooting f- for the Bills. Wow. Where'd you get that shirt? Uh, fanatics.com. Oh, this is new. Brand new. Wow. It, I got to say. No, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. It's, it's, oh. it's, it's old? taped on. No, it's oh, it's tape. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, it looks really good. Oh, now I see the tape. This is just like an undershirt with tape. Frank, you in too? Uh, absolutely not. Wow. Wait, your wife is from Buffalo. Yeah, it's a point of contention. All right. We'll go to the game though. Okay. Yeah, we're going to go to the game. The Bills wrote on my IG. Did you see that? Yeah, this is the year. I'm the, hoping to get a little love from the Bills too, you know? The entire Bills organization. Yeah. They invited I, us. Really? Well, they wrote on the thing. We could take a flight from JFK, fly there and back same day. You think so? Yeah, I yeah, was I guess already so. looking into it. <laughs> that would be amazing. I'm deciding uh, on what jersey I'm going to get. Who are you thinking about? I've narrowed it down. Stefan Diggs. Man. Like a hide. Maybe go throwback. You Bruce gotta, Smith. Oh, look, that's the one I have. You got to uh, go with your Georgia guy. Yeah, James Cook or Isaiah McKenzie. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know McKenzie went there too. Mm-hmm. He's a man. Mm-hmm. Um, the all right, well, this is big. Jamal Hill, do you guys believe that he's going to be a champ next year? That's what he said. Fight yep. for it at least. Fight for it. So I'm looking at the Jamal Hill picture on Tapology right now. Oh, what is it? Why does he look completely different than he does in the UFC? <laughs> like in, in Tapology or on Tapology, 
I mean, he does have the abs and everything. He's really playing up the belly situation. He's got. Wait, the, what are we talking about? Jamal Hill. Oh yeah, I see what you're saying. When he was on the Contender Series. Yeah. He does look to be in great shape. Is this a concern? Are you just saying he got out of shape? Is that the? Well, he's the, been he's been playing he's been playing it up. He's been playing it up that you know, Connor, you have the uh, the speedo picks, right? He, oh yeah, yeah. He keeps talking about the haters, talking about his physique, that he's got the belly, this and that. He still is like in this is good this shape. is also weighing in for contender series. He sucked out no no water in him. He's playing up the belly. I mean, he still looks. Pretty, I mean, he's in, he's in pretty good shape. Whatever whatever he's doing is working in the cage. I'll say that. I'm just getting worried. I don't want him to nah. go like Roy Nelson on us. Nah. So it's now three in a row. I believe. Jan? Jan next? Huh? Blachowicz? Yeah. Oh, Jan Blachowicz. If... That would be a great fight. If they're going to go... There's all... If they're going to go Yiri versus Glover, and there's no official confirmation, but it seems like that's the direction, by the way. They announced on Friday Izzy versus uh, Pajeda MSG. Yeah. Tried to tell you all, but it's okay. Um, I can't. Yeah. What do they do with Magomed? Yeah, Magomed. Yeah, okay. Maybe that's a bit of a step. What about? Oh, what about? Wait, but they announced Ozdemir against um, who? They, uh, Krilov, right? Ozdemir yeah. Krilov. Man, I don't know who he fights. To be honest, Dominic yeah, Reyes is on the shelf. Dominic yeah. Reyes coming back. I mean, Tough to come back against me, him. I was gonna say that feels like a not a not the right fight for either of those two. Like I feel like for him, I'd I say for like, sure for Jamal Hill for sure. No, wow, I think he literally. deserves even a step up from that though. Like he just beat number six. That's number seven. Uh, right, the UFC rankings. Anthony yeah. Smith. He just beat. Like, Anthony yeah. Smith just had gnarly. Off. Anthony Smith. Alexander Rakic is out. out. Yeah. Wow. Or did you just give him a Paul Craig coming off a loss? Oh, Hill Craig too. Oh, yeah. Run yeah. it back with Craig. Yeah. Man, it, it feels like he could just wait and get the winner or loser of one of the one of those other two fights that we're kind of talking about. Can I throw a crazy one out there? He might not like it. Please do. Dustin Jacoby. Oh, wow. mm. But he just got announced. Oh, he did? That feels... Oh, yeah, he yeah. did. That feels all risk, no reward for on Hill side. Like, Hill, man, Hill deserves a top fight. Top he fight. Ju- he just has to. So he just has to wait? But that means he's not fighting for the rest he of the beat year. Number, he beat number six. He's got He's got to get somebody top five next. He just has to wait. And I think he'd wait as long as the next opportunity is like number one contender or like one away. I, I, but he he looks so good. The only guy so would be exciting. Dominic Reyes. Yeah. Unless he's not fighting seven, for... though. Yeah, I'm just saying. Everyone else... Glover, Yuri, Jan, Magomed, Rakic out. Look, I mean, stranger things have happened. Like, he could slide in there with either Magomed or Jan, right? Like, if they don't get matched up or something happens, like, he could slide in there and, and really establish it. I would I would probably wait if I was him. There's there's really no... Like, what's the benefit of fighting Dominic Reyes or Paul Craig or U- Uzdemir, like, at this point for him? It's all, it's all downside. He's, yeah, he's climbing. Yeah, no, he is climbing. Three wins in a row. All finishes. Jimmy Crew, Johnny Walker, Tiago Santos. Not a bad, uh, you know. It's a good run, man. Yeah, I would wait. He's 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 in a good position. I would I would try and get a top guy right now. Any chance they do Patty versus Terrence McKinney? Oh man, I don't think no chance. Now. Less than zero. And I don't even think it's a Patty. Like I think Patty would do it. Like, yeah, would both Patty do would do it. Well, of course, Terrence is going to do it. He's the one calling calling out Patty, but I don't think the UFC is doing it. No real indication no. when he's going to return just yet. Patty, that is. But uh, McKinney called out. I could see them doing the battle Gary fight, maybe. Yeah, I like that. But I, like I don't think one. they would do Gary Instagram something that was just like getting line. Yeah. It is we- It is weird. Like, do are a lot of people calling out Gary right now? I don't really see a lot of people calling him out. Like, do I? Like, if he's not going to fight a Bri- Brian Battle, who's he fighting? You know? I would love to see Brian Battle and Gary. I think that one makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see that. Look, I mean, I don't, I don't, McKinney McKinney versus Patty would would be a fight that is worthy of of the attention it would get. I like that fight, but yeah, that's, it's risky. That feels like a a risky fight. But there's, there's going to have to be a risky fight somewhere in here. There really, there's, you can't just make the run without a risk. But no, I agree. It feels like, it feels like there's, there's, there's still some separation. A reminder that in Connor's fourth fight, he's fighting Dustin Poirier. I know. 
I know. Um, different times. Different times. I would like to see Terrence get out of the apex, put him in front of a yes, crowd. Please. Imagine that card, by the way, with 10 oh uh, finishes <laughs> in San Diego this weekend. Uh, Imagine how much fantastic. better the card would have been. A thousand times better. Uh, I, again, I've said, don't watch tough, but Miller is a character. Juliana Miller. Do you see her post? She like, she announces herself like she's Bruce Buffer. You see that? <laughs> she like actually makes a whole yeah. big announcement. She's hilarious. And then she's talking about pro wrestling and her yeah, grandmother yeah. and all this stuff. Uh, very fun stuff. And so overall, it was a fun night. Those 10 p.m. main card starts can sometimes be brutal and uh, a reminder of the old, uh, you know, the old uh, Fox days. But uh, this was a this was a very good one. And so now we uh, turn our attention to San Diego and that incredible main event. I can't wait for that main event. Cheeto Vera versus Dominic Cruz. So we'll talk to both of them a little later on. I do want, can, can I just say one thing? I need to talk about the Hasim Rahman situation. This is one of the craziest stories that I've ever seen. Hasim Rahman, for those that don't know, was supposed to fight Jake Paul this past weekend. And they were supposed to fight at MSG. And then we find out two Saturdays ago that the fight is off because the fight was supposed to be at 200. And then they moved it to 205. And then 205 couldn't get done. And so then the whole thing fizzled out. And then we had a week of he said, she said, you tucked, you ducked, you're scared, you're this, let me post my footage of this, let me post my footage of that. It was going on and on, and it was becoming annoying, to be honest. And then I find out from him that he's going to weigh in at Gleason's on Friday. You come into the weigh-ins? I said, where are the weigh-ins? Gleason's. I'm like, oh, gosh, that's kind of far from where I live. By the way, what are we weighing in for? Well, that's what I said I would do. I was like, all right, how much are we weighing in at? He wouldn't tell me. I was like, are you weighing in at 200? He says, wouldn't that be something? And I was like, all right. And then, so if you weigh in at 200, why, in the, why isn't this fight happening? He goes, you got to ask Jake that question. All right. So I was like, fine. This kind of like Tony Ferguson back in the day. Let's see if he weighs in. The thing I guess was on his Instagram live. Then I get a text from his team saying, Hasim just weighed in at 206.6. Are you going to report that? And I was like, wait a second, 206.6. That's a pound and six ounces, 1.6 pounds over the 205, 6.6 6 pounds over the original weight. What exactly do you want me to report here? Do you want me to report that he missed weight? That he actually did the weigh-in on his own and he missed weight? Like what point were you trying to prove by doing this? Or did you try to prove a point and did it fail miserably? And so I was like, yeah, okay, sure. And then there, were, I was like, you know, I'm going to report this and this proves that he couldn't make the weight not the original weight or the new weight, but yeah, it shows that he could, he could have gone close to it. I was like, uh, that's not really how this is supposed to work. So then I put it out there and I have to say like 40%, 50% of the comments were like, this just proves that Jake Paul's a bitch. I was like, what? The guy had, missed weight. He, had his seam showed up and weighed that much, the fight would have been off. Off. Because once the, well, yes, because the agreed upon new weight had yeah. no allowance. Uh that was no, part of the, wouldn't that have been wasn't now you you know better than me. Wasn't it if he had missed by that much, he would have been fine? Curse would have been significantly reduced, right? Like that was the deal it, like, for two hundred of a range. So two oh five was it was two oh five, take it or leave it. Like, it, or leave it. Yes. Oh geez. All right. So yeah, I mean, no, nothing was proven other than that. I couldn't believe it. People were like wasn't this, happen regardless. this just proves that Jake I was like, what are you talking about? You changed the weight. A week out, and then you didn't even hit that weight, which he never signed, by the way, uh, which is what I was told. But like, I didn't understand why you wanted me to put this out and why you wanted the world to know this. Doesn't make sense. Two oh six point six. You miss weight. I'll t I'll tell you why. Because there's still forty percent or whatever number Crazy. you know your estimation of yeah. it who are going to say Jake Paul's scared. So I mean, it, it works because the alternative is everybody saying nothing. So forty percent of people believed that that was significant. And then we had the seismic news that the KSI Wasabi fight <laughs> got canceled. <laughs> People get so bad when I report this stuff. It's so funny how seriously they take it. That fight's off. And then Jake tried to get in on that one, which would have been huge. August 27th, 02 Arena. But then he went with some dude that I'd never even heard of. Can I just say something? I, I did go down a rabbit hole. Are you guys familiar with this Andrew Tate character? Oh, yeah. Very familiar. Why you, were you asking for his phone number? Oh, the, the, that, again, just to piss people off. Oh. But, no, because he's trying to fight Jake. Yeah. 
Supposedly. Wait, Eric, do you I know Andrew Tate? Numbers. Andrew Tate, like, yeah. I'm old, old enough in this combat sports game to remember when Andrew Tate was just like a f- combat sports Twitter troll. Like, he was, there was a time where Andrew Tate was like a member of the MMA, like, yes. community posting on the UG, tweeting, and he was just like a troll. I know. And now he's become this elevated, like, uh, someone mentioned him to me. Or, Quotation marks. I don't understand. Someone, yeah. I was like, wait, Andrew Tate? I know that guy. I like, I, I don't know him yeah. personally. And then I went on his social media. I was like, holy crap, this guy has turned himself into this yes. like chauvinistic heel <laughs> type no. character. And I mean, I got to get, I, I would say that's, that's kind. M- mis- he's yeah. a mis- misogynistic. misogynist. What, and I was like, yeah. all right, I, I guess he's made himself into something. But first of all, it's like the wrong kind of heat, if you ask me. It's not the kind of heat yeah. where I want to see this guy get beat up. It's like, oh, this guy is annoying. And I couldn't yeah. believe how popular he was, or at least like what kind of yeah. engagement. And so now this is like a dream matchup, right? Now people are, want to see Jake fight people this guy. People would tune into it, yeah. But here's is, the weird thing. Jake would the be the baby face. I was going to say, is this the yes. one fight that people would actually cheer for Jake in? I feel like they would. Would they not? I do. I mean, people definitely like actually like this guy, but most people like hate follow him. Is Andrew Tate versus Jake Paul a bigger fight than Jake versus Anderson Silva? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. How is that yeah. possible? Numbers wise, numbers wise, for now, sure. That's crazy. People, people that how have nothing people, to do with combat sports would tune into that. How many people are going to actually purchase a pay per view for that? Very, very few. How many I, people are going to watch? End up watching I'm that a lot. You're ordering that pay per view? Yeah, I'm ordering it. Is it Sport weird? Business. So, has in this new persona, Eric, since you you. You know him from like way back. Tate, yeah. Has he fought at all? No, I don't think he's fought since then. I think he kind of, after his fighting career. So what did he do? He just like repackaged himself? He moved to Romania, repackaged himself, (laughs) became like a, you know, a guru of sorts doing like pyramid schemes and stuff. What guru Uh, of what? Life advice for trying to be alpha men. Like he's just running back. He's like the alpha man, according to him. 15 years ago. And he's like, and... he reminds me of Colby Covington and I, I, from this perspective. He noticed he wasn't getting the attention that he wanted or enough of the attention that he wanted. He chose a gimmick. The appeal of it is we, we, you can't believe the things you're saying. I don't believe that you believe the things you're saying. You have to have an alternative view, but he delivers it better than Colby does. He does it a little more straight-faced and he's just better at it. He's a, he's a better showman. So people just hang in there and, and want to hear what he has wow. to say because he's... he's but he's got gimmick. X-Pac heat. It's the wrong kind yeah. of heat in my opinion. I mean, who am I to say? Well, no, I it mean, seems people like people pay attention. But people like yeah. him or do they hate watch it? I think both. Or there's a sector. Yeah, I think, I th- I think both. I I'm think actually shocked you know like about him, Google GC. Way. How do you know about him? Yeah, if you have Twitter or Instagram. Really? Like, I mean, he was. there was one point where he trended like three days in a row. What? <laughs> yeah. I did not. Yeah, he is, someone told me about him he last. He's mad. like, you know what the biggest fight is for Jake right now? It's Andrew Tate. I was like, yeah. Andrew Tate? What? And then I looked him up. I was like, holy shit, this guy is blowing up. Yeah, it would be hilarious. He's massive. I would 100% watch, and I know a lot of my friends would watch. This. He does know how to fight, though. I mean, he's not like... He's a fighter. Yeah. yeah. He's not like an influencer. The thing is, he's, a, he's, he's like a kickboxer Muay Thai guy. I don't know, you know how well he would do in a boxing match. I don't think it I'm not sure that even matters this. at this point. Really. Yeah. By the way, why Romania? I don't know. Maybe the extradition laws. I is don't know. It, I don't know. Is that part of the story? Oh, is, what, is he a criminal? There's some allegations. Oh, yeah. He, yeah. Well, yeah, there's alleg- like he was arrested recently. He was? See, I didn't go that far. Charges deep. or something. Yeah. There's some problematic Andrew Tate. So they're not going to go down that as route. As you'd expect. They're not going to go down that route. Mm. I don't know. Imagine, I and imagine, imagine this dude fighting Jake Paul at MSG. No the chance. Problem child fighting. I just, the problem for me, child. It's, <laughs> who's the, the part problem? that just is crazy to me is remembering Andrew Tate just being a Twitter troll like years ago. Like he was just like a, a dude in the combat right. sports scene. Like is he like Bloodstained like, Lane. And now he's the big. Yeah, kind of like a, akin <laughs> to yeah. Except now he really he's... fought though. That's the difference, right? Like he he was a he was a fighter. But yeah, he was just trolling like kickboxing stuff. So weird. This whole Crazy. world is so weird. Now he's got almost 5 million followers on Instagram. Can, can I tell you something? The, 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 you know, the reason I know about the wasabi thing and all that, like the, there was a chance that I was going to go there and not to get too far deep into it. So I started to like research this whole world. And this is a crazy world, man. There's people who actually just focus on this world. Yeah. It's not like us who it's like, oh, Jake's fighting Tyron Woodley. Let's just, you know jump in for a second like this is a whole universe 
Who is the Ariel Helwani of YouTube boxing? Uh, there is a guy. I know. Well, I, I feel weird saying Ariel Helwani, but like there's a guy. Uh, Who's his the Adam Schefter? Who's the. Uh, the there's Asian a guy named Wade names? Plem. Shout out to him. He does great work. I have no issues with him whatsoever, but I went on his YouTube page and his whole page is just reporting on this world. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't he do crazy numbers too? Yes. <laughs> That's crazy. It's a whole thing. Yeah. There's Deji, there's this guy, there's that guy, there's this guy. I was like, wow. I didn't realize it was a whole thing, a whole universe. Um, so anyway, we'll see who he fights next. He teased that he had a big announcement today. Everyone thought it was a fight, but it's uh, a new betting app slash podcast. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so good luck to him on that. By the way, is it too early? I know we're doing parlay for next week. Of course, we have to go 4-0. Oh. Is it too early to make my pick? Who is it? It's um, this young up-and-comer, Bo Nical. Oh, no. <laughs> no, that breaks I the just, rules. He's bigger than, uh, he's bigger than uh, minus 1,000. Damn. Oh, uh, he's like I thought it was 2,000. No, 15, 1,500, 1,500 at the moment. I, he opened at like minus 300. I know someone that got in on it. Come on, really? Yeah. What? It immediately disappeared, but yeah, they put a lot of money on it too. Damn it. I'm yeah. looking here. I'm trying to find who's I mean, we do, have, we do have Bellator. Bellator, I'm looking at Bellator. Elimele McFarlane, a, a, a favorite against Bruna Ellen. I'm not going to say it until Wednesday, but I have a sneaking suspicion of who you're going to choose there. Vanderford at 205. You have a suspicion? You think, I'm going, you think I'm going with Cheeto? Yeah. No way. Are you kidding me? That's way too close. We'll see come Wednesday. It's 500 or up. Oh. Uh, 500 or up. <laughs> Lupi Godinez, but she fights Angela. Angela's yeah, always yeah. a tough out. Sure. Mm, O'Day Osborne. Minus 230. There's no real, like, there's no Terrence McKinney here. Uh, Mowgli Benitez, minus 350. Not yeah. bad. You thought I'm going... No, I can't do that to Don. It's on the show. David Onama? Calvillo? No, there's no... I mean, this is a tough one. I might have to wait for those Bellator lines to open up a little bit. Someone on the undercard over there. Uh, minus you, 230, Deanna Bennett? You missed the Bailey Schoenfelder, minus 1,200. Where's that? That's on Bellator. Uh, here's your minus 800, Isaiah Hokett. There it is. <laughs> Lock it in. <laughs> Who's he fighting? So we're just gonna do Nick Prince. Ariel. Ariel gets whoever's the the biggest favorite that's less than minus one thousand. Just one thousand. By the way, I'm I I, I th this is not like some secret. I'm a thousand. You have to understand. I lost like eight weeks in a row with the H Dow. I'm just I'm just trying to build myself back up here. This is me taking you know tune up fights. Mojo Mitchell building is minus six hundred. Mitchell McKee and. Right. and Collectively, we're up five units, so appreciate the, yeah. appreciate the, the money that's being handed out, people. Now, I understand you could say, all right, if I was picking guys who were like minus 200, then the odds would be a little better, right? But I don't care. I just need the W. I don't, I don't yeah. I, I just care about winning these bets. Let me tell you something. It's a lot more fun picking a minus 850 guy than it is a plus 250 guy, just for the ego. Because then you don't have to go on your Twitter and be like, you jinxed them. Eh. Come on. The first one you lose, people are going to say that you jinxed them. Of course. Who do you like in that main event, GC? Have you decided I yet? I don't know, dude. I, I don't know. It's a tough one, right? Yeah. It's very tough. A lot of people. Cheeto's going to get a ton of love. Like, you think so? I think the line's going to get steamed towards Cheeto. Even though it's in his hometown. Dominic's hometown. Yeah. No home field advantage? Probably goes to a decision. You think so? And then he gets the nod from the Maybe. hometown judges. Maybe. All right. Pretty big price on Dom, plus 180 right now at DraftKings. Yeah. I see 85, but you're looking at the site. I'm looking at best fight odds. Yeah, 24 and 3. What is that? I don't mean? know. Isn't that Dominic's record? Oh, all right. I thought you were talking about odds or something like that. No. Um, all right, so that's this weekend. As always on Wednesday. Frank, do you know your pick yet? Not yet. You haven't done your research? That's not what I said. I'm just I saw him watching some tape question. earlier on uh, Yasmin. <laughs> Come on. He's, he was doing Martin Boudet. <laughs> Stop it. When I walked in. Are you serious? Hey, he had a notepad out and everything. What are you writing down? It's not important. Wow, you're taking notes on his jab, on his foot movement, head movement? A little bit. You know, his okay. footwork. Um, but so you, you started to think about it. Yes. Okay. I'm doing my homework. Uh, do we have I mean, let's McKinney? call it what it was. The 
the Brian Battle pick was inspired last Thank week. Thank you. That was a that was yeah. a great one. By the way, it was that a fantastic. Got- you have more balls than I do. You have b- or more balls, not more balls, bigger <laughs> balls. Damn it! <laughs> well, actually, up. we don't know. This is uh, this is uh, ending up on uh, Bohashinia Depot. Uh, where's Terrence at? He's not here. We're onboarding. Oh, is he come? Is he there? Just yeah. joined the waiting room. Oh, all right. Um, no, I give you a lot of credit, Frank. A lot of people. Uh, have said that you are the reason why we are winning. New York Rick, we'll check in with you later. Thank you very much. We got to uh, replace you for Mr. McKinney. Uh, matter of moments, we're going to be joined by Terrence McKinney. My pick, uh, which I'm sure he cares about oh so very much, uh, but he is uh, he is rolling right now. He's one of the up-and-comers in the UFC 155-pound division. That's lightweight for the uninformed. Defeated Eric Gonzalez. Coming off the loss to uh, Drew Dober, took it on short notice. Prior to that, Juan. Prior to that, Juan. And so he is now 3-1 and one in the UFC. So still to come, uh, Terrence McKinney. And then we'll have Jeff Neal, who had the big win over Vicente Luque, one of his best performances in the UFC. Then we'll have Jamal Hill, who we just spoke about, Sweet Dreams. And uh, then we'll get into the meat of things. Juliana Pena, the aforementioned Dominic Cruz, and the aforementioned Cheeto Vera. Very busy weekend coming up in the world of MMA with UFC, PFL, and Bellator all in action. Uh, PFL and Cardiff, which I'll be going to in uh, early September, first time there. Cardiff, Wales, which I didn't realize was such a hard place to get to. Uh, you can't get there direct. You got to go to London first and then take the two and a half hour train or drive or whatever it is. Uh, but the PFL card has uh, Rory. Uh, the Bellator card is pretty good. Like I said, Ali Malay and uh, many others. And then the UFC card with a fantastic main event. For now, though, let us say hello to one Terrence McKinney, who had the big win on Saturday over Eric Gonzalez. He said it took too long in his estimation. Let us say hello to T-Rex. Is he there? Hey, what's up? Well, what's yes, up, T-Rex? How are you, my man? Hey, pleasure to be here, brother. Having a wonderful day. It's a great weekend so far. Uh, it's still weekend for you? It's Monday. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's Monday. Yeah, yeah. You're just uh, living I got, life. I got to get the dub. My son's about to be born. Your son's about to be born? Yeah. Wait, are you are you at the hospital right now? Yes, sir. Come on, man. Why are you doing this interview? What's going on? <laughs> what is ha- You didn't tell me this. I had no idea. Yeah, man. I, I just wanted to surprise the world. Surprise, surprise. Wait, wh- how? I'm not the king anymore. It's not <laughs> be my son. <laughs> Holy smokes! Like, how how soon are we talking? Soon, like today? Yeah, today. Probably by the end of the day. Oh my gosh! I'd even know. Is this your first? Yeah. Congratulations. Hey, thanks, brother. H- how's your better half feeling? Um. I, I, I know she's gonna. She's a champion. I, she's gonna get it done. Please don't tell me you're doing this in the room with her right there, because she's gonna want to kill me. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! I hear her laughing. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Uh, when my kids were born, my wife told me to stop talking, let alone doing a show in the room. <laughs> so God bless her. I hope everything goes yeah. well. If you need to jump off here at any moment, I'm only going to keep you for a few minutes here because I feel horrible about this situation, but you're an ultimate pro. Um, congratulations on the win. And I saw that you, t- was that really you who tweeted it? It took too long. Like you, that, that, <laughs> that tweet came out like three I minutes tell, later. I tell, I tell them what I'm thinking and, and then they get it done. Wow. Look at you. Look at that tweet. It, that was like literally three minutes after the fight. You nailed that. <laughs> Why do you feel like it took too long? Um, that's because like I don't know. He was spamming the block button like he was my little brother playing me in a video game or something. <laughs> so I wanted to get the knockout, but he was just blocking a lot. So I was like, I'm just gonna take him down and choke him. Yeah, well, it was impressive. You were a massive favorite. When you see that you're that big of a favorite, you were the. I mean, you were the lock of the night. Does that add pressure? Like, oh man, everyone thinks I'm gonna smoke this guy. Uh, I have to go out there and prove that everyone's right. Um, for me, it's just like um, people finally believe in me, believing in me. So it just made me happy that people know my capabilities and what I can bring to the table. So like, it was like a pleasure knowing that I'm the favorite, and it just made me walk in with the utmost confidence. Yeah, uh, you're coming off that loss to Drew Dober. You took the fight on short notice. I don't think your stock went down at all. 
uh, you had that moment at the beginning, but you know, like just coming off that first loss in the UFC, did you feel, despite being such a huge favorite, did you feel like there was pressure to prove that you're still, you know, this rising star prospect that everyone's so hyped about? Um, not at all, man. Cause I think I, I, I did what I did and I proved what I said has been real. And, and I just took that as learning experience, you know, you win and you learn. Yeah. Like the great John Cavanaugh once said. Um, so just curious, that fight against uh, Drew Dober a few months ago, back in February, did you walk away thinking like, all right, I took a shot, short notice, you know, shit happens, all good? Or were you really pissed off about it? Because you did rock him there early on. <laughs> um, I was a little bit mad at myself because um, I was being too, like, bloodthirsty. As you guys see this time, I maintained my distance and I was picking my shot. Instead of being like a wild animal, because at the end of the day, this isn't the streets. So I'm a professional now, and that's what I wanted to show this fight. And I'm glad I took that loss. So now I know what it takes to go to the deeper rounds and maintain my composure. Yeah. So you you felt like if you would have just chilled out for a second and remained composed, you would have you would have won that fight. Yeah, and just not just trying to be like overconfident because I, I knew I could take him down in the middle, but I knew no one's ever knocked him out. And I was like, in my head, I was like, there was only one thing I was walking away with. Ah, uh, so you were feeling yourself a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I saw in the post-fight press conference, you said that you were a little bit down afterwards. Is that accurate? Yeah, man, because I don't, I don't take time to lose. And I know what my capability is. And I know I could be anyone in the world, but that's up to me. Mm. Do you feel like you had to take a step back after, like you beat Drew Dober? Now we're talking some, you know, pretty big fights, but because you got bloodthirsty, as you said, you didn't get the W. So now you have to build yourself back up. Do you feel like you're back to where you were before that fight, or you still have to build yourself up a little bit? Um, I think I proved myself. Um, I think one more good fight, and then the ranked opponent before the year ends. That's the plan. No more apex, please. Can we get you in front of people? No, that's what I'm saying. The crowd, man, I uh, need it. You, you, you have oh, such I'm an so energy up. to you. You're so likable. You're so fun to watch, entertaining. Putting you at the apex is a crime. Imagine that whole card in front of... Imagine that card was in San Diego this weekend, how crazy the crowd would be. Oh, yeah, that would have been nuts. A hundred percent finish on a card, uh, something that hasn't happened in a while. So um, it was an honor to be on that card. So you want to fight in front of people, and you said afterwards you want Patty. What do you think the chances are that you get this fight against Patty Pimblett? Um, uh, not very likely. Probably once we're both ranked, you know, he has to take the day these steps, you know. They seen what I did to Drew, Patty, Patty, everything would be down. They're they're losing money. Then they gotta give me the money, which is even better. But you know, they 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 gonna take their time on that. So <laughs> um, but I do got some other names still in mind if if that don't go. Who's that? Um, I would have loved to fight Jim Miller or Bobby Green. Why them? Just be honored. Both guys are legends. And I think that makes for an exciting fight. Yeah. Um, but the number one choice would be Patty. How do you think that fight would go? Um, me putting in the sleep, man, and showing people that scouts can get knocked out. Um, and the fans are going to go crazy. Where do you think would be the best place for it? I want to do a Madison Square Garden, man. Crazy. Let's freaking go. That would be nuts. Even though you're about to become a dad, you're not going to take some time off? Um, I still got a lot of stuff to get done for my family, you know? And I know once my son's old enough, he'll understand the sacrifice I made so that he can live a better life than I ever could have lived. Respect. W what if your son tells you when he's like 15, he wants to fall in your footsteps and be a fighter? How would you feel about that? We'll make it happen. And, and I know he'll be even greater than me because I'm... Um, my blessings are going to fall down upon him. Yes. Amen. Um, so that would be huge. You versus Patty. I agree. I think Patty, by the way, would take the fight. I just don't think that they'll make the fight. Like, I think he would be down. I don't, I don't think he's that kind of guy who's picking and choosing, but I think they're trying to be strategic as to who they match him up against. So, you know, maybe one day, but I, I don't know. I feel like it's not going to happen either. I think you have the right <laughs> approach. Yeah. When we're, when we're both ranked, yeah, it'll be more worth it. What, what, did, what did you think of his last fight? Did you see it? Yeah, I watched it. What do you think? Um, I think he did decent. Um, but the kid knows how to finish a fight, man. 
You got to give, give him props, that. right? He knows. He knows how to get creative. Even when he was down, he he still came out crazy and he got it done. He knows how to get it done. So, and as we know, we I know how to get it done. So I know that's gonna be a fight that fans would never forget. By the way, I like that you call him a kid. I'm pretty sure he's older than you. Is he not? <laughs> uh, no, I'm talking about the maturity level. You know? I got you. I got you. I got. You. I mean, he he he's not at a hospital I ain't, right I ain't now. Have to be teabagging somebody for sure. Come That's about me. On. <laughs> that is weird, Maybe man. When I was a youngster. <laughs> um, wait, what'd you say? Maybe when what? I was a youngster. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, all right. So we want to come back in November. And you want to get a veteran. I feel like those two guys, that's, that's you know, possible, or at least more possible. Uh, they're both legends, both veterans. You're freaking on a roll right now. You're about to have a kid. You're at the hospital. I, I have to say, Terrence, I'm still a little bit shook by all this. <laughs> you're, 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 uh, are you married? Can I ask? Or what, what, what's the No, state? I'm not married. Okay. Because I saw also, I hate to bring this up, but I saw a tweet. From, did you see the tweet from the fighter? I was, where I was going to bring it up, yeah, but now man. it might be awkward. I'll, I'll, <laughs> Should I not bring it up? I don't know what to do. You see what she said? Yeah, that's funny. But uh, yeah, she's 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 cool as hell, and I know that was gonna make, it helped make the fight like even bigger to people. So like, yeah, it was just a good business move as well. On my, on yeah. my hands, I think Diana, she's uh, prolific on Twitter, right? She said, uh, "Yeah, if you fight Patty and beat him, you will. She will start dating you. <laughs> like you have no say in the matter." <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna show up at your house but it sounds like you're spoke for i can't believe that your girlfriend is girl girlfriend fiance i just don't know what to call this lovely lady um <laughs> my girl yeah your girl okay i can't believe she's allowing this to happen right now i mean you need to put a a, a ring on her finger asap because i would i would venture to say 95 percent of women in this state would kill you for this <laughs> where are you right now nah cause they know you're a big deal man so respect, respect. I think they, they, they respect was it was it uh, stressful I mean this could have happened during your fight this could have happened last week when you were in Vegas oh uh, yeah I was, you know, a lot of stuff was going through my mind during the fight you know teared up a little bit um, because like I said now that this, my son's about to be here losing not an option and you guys are gonna see the most deadly, deadliest man ever. So there's more pressure now, right? There's more, you're fighting for just, you know, not just yourself, but you're fighting for other people, a family, your, your, your youngster, you know, you know what I mean? Like, do you, do you, do you feel yeah. like you were viewing the fight differently? Exactly. That's why you see me calm, pick my shots. Like I'm ready to be a world champion and they're going to see that love out of me from here on out. Wow. This is amazing. How, so wh where do you think you are like this time next year? Where are we? Um. I already know, Lord willing, we're going to get it done, be in the rankings, and then um, maybe fighting someone, whoever's five or six, and then um, getting ready for one more fight and then fighting for the bill. Who do you think wins, uh, Islam or Charles in October? I'm going for Charles for sure. Why? Just because he's just dangerous everywhere, more dynamic, more tools to win the fight. Is that who you want to win or who you think is going to win? That's why I want to win, but okay. like realistically, like if Islam just grabbed this dude, um, that Dagestani wrestling, it just cancels out jujitsu, man. And, and like you, you can't prepare someone to have like wrestling abilities. It's something that takes years, you know. Right, right, right. Like the wrestler strength is different. You know, when you got wrestling, the strength of, that they grab you is way different than like anything like you ever experienced. Right. By the way, what's and the what's, what's the name of your team? Uh, warrior camp warrior camp um because i heard that's that... why i was throwing up the w with the guns you know warrior camp baby oh, okay and and it's it's based where uh in spokane washington and where are you now spokane oh you are in spokane okay all right so you went back home you rushed back home just to make sure and when did you find out that this was going down today um uh... <laughs> I already knew about it. it was, oh, okay. Yeah, All right. Gosh, I can't believe you agreed to do this. I'm still, I'm blown away. This is like an all time moment in the history of the show. I have to say, <laughs> but I still can't believe you agreed to legend, do it. Dude, let's go. You're a legend, man. I'm going to let you go. Cause I feel horrible about this. Uh, but I appreciate you doing it. 
congrats on the win. We, you know, we're doing a parlay thing on our show. I don't know if you know this, but each one of us has to pick a guy. I picked you. I mean, minus 850, it was like easy. You know, I had to go with the, the sure thing. So you were my guy last week and I was riding. So yeah, thanks yeah. for making me look good, my friend. And a great win. No the, problem, the tweet afterwards was great as well. Um, you're on fire. And I, w- I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, feel too bad about the Dober thing. You took your shot, short notice. You, 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 you jumped back into the fire there. And I thought you looked great. And, you know, you're a youngster. It'll just be a little speed bump for you. So uh, good to see you back on track. Good luck to you, man. It, my people, we say muzzle tov when someone's about to have a baby. You know what that means? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 hear you, I see him say that at the weddings. I'm not sure what it means, though. It's like, congratulations. It good luck. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah, it's yeah. actually one of those terms that has multiple meanings. It's like, congrats, good luck. You could say it a bunch of different things. Anyway, uh, muzzle tov to you and your missus. I hope everything oh, okay. goes well. If you want to throw in like a middle name, Ariel, I wouldn't hate you. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't hate it. You know, just in, in honor of this moment. <laughs> I, I wouldn't feel, you know... <laughs> <laughs> and I'll let you guys decide that later on. Uh, thank you, Terrence. Uh, <laughs> Good luck to you guys. Thanks for doing this and congrats. Good job, man. Stay blessed, brother. You thank too. You. There he is, Terrence McKinney. Wow. I mean, I would. I have to say, guys, I was a little shaken up by that whole experience. I mean, that's pretty crazy. He, he was in the room with his girlfriend, Mrs. Better half. I remember when my wife was about to give birth to our first child, and I was talking. She was like, "Enough talking out of you." Could you imagine what this woman... <laughs> Someone tell me to stop talking. No. <laughs> Could you imagine? He's like, yo, I got to do this interview with Ariel real quick. I mean, yeah, that's amazing. That's dedication, though. I can't believe he didn't tell me. Wow. What a legend. Terrence McKinney. Can I just say, I feel like that deserves a spot on the wall. I feel like the baby deserves a spot on the wall. Too much? Ariel McKinney? The whole family. The whole family. <laughs> Ariel McKinney. All of them together in the delivery room. Yes, the picture afterwards where he's like got his arm over. Spot on the wall. I was, I was, I have to say, not one of my best interviews. I was shook right there. I'm sweating like crazy right now. Oh. I was shook. Holy smokes. God bless. Whew. Could you imagine? Hey, um, real quick, I need to go do this interview on Zoom. I'm just running to the bathroom, sweetheart. Are you sure? My contractions are 30 seconds apart. Yes, I am sure. The stress is high enough in that room. Maybe <laughs> yeah. he needed a little break. Maybe he didn't need it. I mean, golly. Uh, I remember the. I was watching CNN, and they put the, uh, the thing on top of the, uh, the Freedom Tower, 1776. Oh, yeah. You know it's 1776 feet tall. Yeah, which is pretty cool. It is pretty cool. Uh, that was happening on the day. You remember these moments. I guess now he's going to remember that he did uh, an interview with me. Um, so God bless. Thank you very much, Terrence McKinney. Congrats on the win. Huge win for him. And coming up in a matter of moments is Jeff Neal. Uh, Jeff Neal has had a crazy, crazy couple of years. Um... was sick, thought he was going to die, thought he was close to dying, had uh, all kinds of health issues, but he has made it all the way back. And he had the win over Santiago Ponzinibbio, the split decision win, late December of last year. Prior to that, had the back-to-back losses to Wonderboy Thompson and Neil Magny. Prior to that, was undefeated in the UFC, went on a nice run, uh, wins over Brian Camozzi, Frank Camacho, Bilal Muhammad, as he mentioned in the cage, uh, Nico Price, and then Mike Perry, and then had the uh, the back-to-back stumbles, and then had the Ponzinibbio split decision, and then had the massive win over Vicente Luque. And now that team is on fire. Uh, Fortis MMA, one of the best teams in the in the country. Safe Saud, uh, one of the best coaches in the country, gets very fired up. Was great in between. I think it was the second and the third. And then he ended up winning via um, TKO in the third. And afterwards said he wanted to fight Gilbert Burns, which I think is a great fight. And he said if uh, Jorge Masvidal, Gilbert did, if Jorge Masvidal doesn't take the fight, he'd be open to fighting him. So that would be a, uh, a huge opportunity for Jeff Neal, who 
I would like to think after that performance is back to being 100%. Still very young, just 31 years young. Still able to uh, be a player at 170. I remember those pictures of him in the in the hospital. Uh, it all looked very scary. I remember talking to Saif Saud about him and his uh, his health issues as well. Looked very scary, but he looked great in that fight. And uh, he's now our next guest. So let's say hello to Jeff Neal, Hands of Steel, who had the massive win. Jeff, my man, congratulations on the win. Well done. Hey, thanks, brother. Appreciate it. Best performance in the UFC, fair to say? Yeah, I guess, I guess that's fair to say, yeah. Biggest win? Biggest win, yeah, for sure. Do you feel like yourself again? That's what I was, I was, I was like, uh, you know, just talking before you came on. Like, this felt like the Jeff Neal before you got sick. This felt like you were back. You may feel differently inside. Tell us, does it feel like you're back? No, it, it honestly do feel like the best I've ever felt. Like, you know, a lot of people say that before every fight, but, uh, I really meant it when I said it, and I, I, I feel great, you know, and uh, I feel like this is the time for me to may, uh, make a title run. Um, when you fought Ponzinibbio just a few months ago, the split decision win, how did you feel compared to how you felt? Not not about the performance, but just like how your body felt in that fight compared to how you felt on Saturday. Um, I, I think I was, my body was good during the Ponzinibbio fight. I was just scared to uh, push it, you know what I mean? Mm. Just because, you know, having congestive heart failure and your kidney shutting down, it's like a, it's a, it plays like a mental effect on you. You know what I mean? And like, once I started getting tired in a positive fight, I was just like taking off in the second round. I kind of did it this fight against the uh, Luke, but, um, uh, I pushed, I pushed the pace a little bit more this fight. Uh, so how do you get over that? Like that mental hurdle of, like you said, congestive heart failure, kidney failure, all that stuff. I mean, that is so scary. How do you, like if, if that happened to me, God forbid, like I wouldn't want to do the thing that I was doing before. I'd be, I'd be sitting on the couch for the rest of my life. How do you get over that? It should just work out. Just work Keep out. Train and push yourself. Yeah, that's all I did. I just uh every day I train, I try to train just a little bit harder than I did the day before. And you know what I mean? I go for runs and I keep track of my time. And then the next time I go for a run, I make sure that I beat the time that I beat uh previously and I just build up from there. How long are your runs? An hour. An hour. Wow. Yeah. And 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 how do you feel after like early on? How are you feeling? Early on when I first started running? Yeah. Like shit, really? <laughs> like it was, it was horrible. Yeah, but um, towards the end of the camp, uh, I, I felt great running. It was, I was just excited to run. I was waking up every other day, running for an hour. It, it was, just, it was, uh, it was fun for me. How many miles is that? I mean, I, I get anywhere between like eight and eight point five. Holy crap! I mean, no one has any excuse if you're coming off of those health scares and you're running eight to eight point five miles a day. A day. No, no, not a day. Oh, heck no. Oh. Nobody can't say. I'll, I'll do it like at least two or three times a week. Okay. In addition to all the other training that you're doing. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, you were the underdog going into this fight. How did you feel about that? I, I didn't, I didn't care. Uh, you know what I mean? Underdog favorite, you know what I mean? Fa you could be a favorite and get knocked out. So it doesn't matter. I just, I just, uh, I'm glad I've ruined a lot of people's parlays. <laughs> uh, and, and, and what about Luke in terms of like, I mean, this was a big opportunity for you, a big fight, a big name. Uh, your level of confidence going into this fight, how high was it? Well, it was super high, you know what I mean? Uh, and uh, Luke was a perfect fight for me. I've been watching him and like plotting on fighting him for a long time. So, you know, whenever I got the call for him, I was already ready for him. I didn't have to watch too much film because we had so many mutual opponents that I already watched a lot of film on them anyways. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? I knew what, I knew what made him tick and like, uh, I just knew where his punches were going to come from. I knew when he was going to throw his punches and I, I, I had a, I had a, I was always one step ahead of him the whole fight. Uh, did you feel like he was on a roll and now that's, I believe two in a row that he's now lost. Do you feel like he is slowing down? Like, what do you think is the difference or is it just the, the, the opponents that he's facing? What, what do you think? It, it was an opponent. So he, he, he fought a wrestler, you know what I mean? That's tough. That's a tough thing. And Bilal's a grinder. You know what I mean? He's going to grind out the decision. And then, uh, me, I'm a, I'm a southpaw and I have good footwork. You know what I mean? And that kind of threw him off. I was, he, uh, you have to, if you're in front of Luke and you're standing there, you want to trade with him. He's most likely going to get the advantage. You know what I mean? I just, uh, I kept moving off the angles, hitting him from, uh, just different angles that he wasn't used to. And, uh, he's still the same Luke. He's going to come back his next fight and probably start somebody. So I don't, I don't think I see a lot of comments of people keep saying, Oh, well, Luke doesn't look the same. Yeah. Cause he fought me. You right. know what I mean? Like, I, like you get, you, let me put a left hand in your face and see how you act. Right. Well put. Um, 
are you appreciating all of this more since before the health scare? Like, do you feel like you're appreciating the little things, the victories where you're at in your career as opposed to maybe before? I, I know, I mean, your story was inspiring before all of that, but now do you feel like you're viewing everything in, you know, that's happening in your career in, uh, in the cage, the wins, all that stuff more because, you know, it was almost all taken away from you. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm trying to, you know what I mean? I, I got a bad habit. I'm like, just not giving myself enough credit. You know what I mean? Uh, I just like, you know what I mean? I forget that I'm a UFC fighter half the time. You know what I mean? I have like conversations with people when they bring up UFC. I'm like, Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> I do fight for the UFC. That's wild. But yeah, I'm, I'm starting to appreciate it more. You know what I mean? This whole uh, fight week, I was just like, we, we got to stay in a nice hotel for once, you know what I mean? Instead of the residence in. Yeah. But it was just, uh, just taking it all in just happy all day, but walking around, listening to music, joking the whole time. It was, it was, it was a fun experience this week. I'm happy you mentioned that. Now they have you at the Red Rock, right? Red Rock Casino. No, they, they had us at the, the Conrad at Resorts World this time. It's like oh. a newer hotel. It's pretty badass. It's nice. But, yeah, it's nice. I felt bad for you guys. I mean, like you're a UFC fighter. <laughs> You shouldn't be staying at the residence. I know during COVID, it, you know, it, it kind yeah. of made things easier. But then once everything was opening up, you guys deserve a little bit. If I, you want to be happy, you want to be comfortable, you want to be around. Yeah. Like there was nothing to do at the residence in, right? Yeah, yeah, it had nothing to do. It was it was super boring. It just it didn't feel like a fight week when we were, when I was at the residence in. It's just like I was like I'd rather just get my own hotel somewhere or something. But you had to be there for COVID, or whatever. But I, I agree on that. Like I feel like you know what I mean. We did deserve a little bit more than that, but UFC did what they had to do, you know, right. and uh, they they kept fights going in a time where they could have just said, laid us all off, and we just had to wait until COVID was over. Right. Uh, what about fighting at the Apex? Uh, I liked it this time because there was actually fans in there. Yeah. My first, my, my first two times fighting there, it was like literally nobody but just UFC. Oh. Can you hear me? Yeah, we lost you for a second there. Yeah, right now. yeah. but um, what was I saying? Uh, oh, you said you liked it better because yeah, there like, were fans. Yeah, there's yeah, there's fans, and like it was a close environment. It was loud. It, it felt like a bar fight. You know what I mean? Just everybody yelling. You could hear everybody screaming. Someone was pissing me off, saying, "Go, let's go, Luke. K, fuck him up." I'm like, oh. okay. <laughs> you can like literally hear that in the fight. Yeah, you can. Can you still hear the <laughs> announcers with the fans there too? Um, I didn't hear him. I was just, my, my coach was the loudest thing in there. So that's yes. all I heard. Man, safe is, <laughs> he's intense, huh? Yeah, he is. I love it. You, you like that? You respond well to that? Yeah, I do. I do. It's, it, it reminds me of football. You know what I mean? Uh, you know what I mean? I don't need somebody bathing me. Come on, Jeff, you can do it. No, it was like, Jeff, get the hell up. Do it. You know, right. that's a, that's the type of stuff I need. What is the vibe like at the gym? You guys are, you know, like, I think that there was like a rough patch there for a second. Now you guys are on a roll. Um, he's leading the charge. Tell us what the vibe is like these days in Dallas. Yeah, it's it, it's 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 amazing. You know what I mean? Everybody's coming off these big wins. We're we're uh oh shoot. Nope. <laughs> Technical error, my no bad. Problem. But yeah, everybody's coming off these big wins and uh we're we're really on the up. Like I really feel like we're gonna have like multiple world champions from our gym, like real soon. You know what I mean? I've like Ryan Spann's right there. You know what I mean? I'm on the way up there. Like, you know, uh, Macy, I think Macy's going to get it, get it done too. And uh, we've, we're just going to keep winning and we're going to prove that we're the best team in the world. Yeah. Safe. Uh, he, uh, he sent me uh, some stat here. I'll read it since we're talking about this. 12 wins, four wins in four weeks, four ranked wins in as many months, best team in the world. That's what he sent me. So how about that? <laughs> I agree. Uh, on and I loved him he, he yell. I think it was during the second and the third round. He was. Uh, I love when we get like a little bit of insight into the corner talk, uh, and he was really like firing you up there. And you feel like you needed that. You're okay with that. I'm okay with it. Yeah. I, like, cause like he, he's right. I did take the second round off, and you know, like that's part of like my mental, uh, like the mental hubs I'm trying to get over. Like I, uh, I got. I started feeling tired in the second round, so I just wasn't i was just scared to push it because i didn't want to like gas out or do you know what i mean and he snapped some sense in me the third round and he was like don't let this dude take this fight from you you know especially after that first round you know what i mean it wasn't even close so there's i let him potentially win the second round for what just because i'm tired 
Do you have any sort of, um, I don't know, after effects? Like, does it ever creep up any of the issues that you felt? Do you, you know, even now, do you feel like, oh, I, I have this, I, I need to take a step back? Like, does anything rear its head when you're training? No, n- n- nothing that's not psychological. You okay. know what I mean? I, like, my body, my body's fine. You know what I mean? Everything's fine. I just, uh, at the, I got to, I don't know when my body started being fine, but it's fine now for sure. But it's just, uh, once I get over these, uh, these little mental blocks, you know what I mean? I've, you know what I mean? Coach safe won't have to scream at me in between the second and third round anymore. Right. <laughs> um, and then you get the finish and then you call it Gilbert Burns. I like that. Call it a lot. Yeah. What do yeah. you think the chances are of this happening? Um, it, it depends on Jorge, you know what I mean? And it depends on how long Gilbert wants to wait for Jorge to make up his damn mind. You know what I mean? Like, I'm right here. I'm willing to fight. You know what I mean? We can go ahead and we can get this done on the uh, MSG card or we can just wait to December, but we could, me and Gilbert could fight before the end of the year. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And if, if that's something Gilbert wants, then I'm, I'm right here. I'm ready for it. You know what I mean? You get court, Master Doll is always going to be there. You can, you can wait for that. Right. He'll, he'll probably come out like next year, mid-March or something, talking about he wants to fight, but why wait on him when I'm, I'm right here? I'm ready to fight. Why Gilbert? Why well, Gilbert? That's a... Honestly, because I beat Luke and uh, Luke was ranked, what, number six or something like that. Mm-hmm. And that's it was it was a great win. It, it wasn't just like a barely, you know, what I mean, barely got through it. You know what I mean? And he's what one of the most dangerous welterweights. You know, what I mean, all the finishes he had, like he has so much rec- so many records. I finished the finisher. You know what I mean? So I feel like I deserve something ahead of me. And Gilbert's the only one that's still available. So that's why I want to fight him. I, I'm assuming you saw his fight against Hamza back in April. I did. What do you think of that fight? His performance in it? It was exciting. I liked it. You know what I mean? Uh, he showed he showed that Hamzad is beautiful, you know, because Hamzad had this uh, aura of, like, invincibility around him. You know what I mean? But Gilbert showed that, you know what I mean? He held the line, and he, even though he lost, he didn't let him, uh, Hamzad walk through him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hamzad afterwards told me that, like, he felt like Gilbert almost, like, viewed that as a win. Like, he was taking, like, a victory lap tour afterwards, which... Uh, he said, spoke- that's bad. what's that? Yeah. That, that, I mean, that speaks on like how Gilbert thought about the fight going in. Maybe right. Gilbert thought he was going to get a fast whoop. Right. Right. That's, that's essentially what Hamza was saying uh, to a degree. He was like, well, like, you know, that's kind of like a loser mentality. If you're going to take this, yeah. his words, not mine. Um, I thought it was a tremendous fight, but like, he thought it was weird that he was like doing all this media talking about the fight in a glowing way because he ultimately lost the fight. And I, I thought Hamza won the fight. Do you agree? Yeah. So I agree. I agree. Uh, we've got the welterweight title fight next week. And uh, I'm sure you're going to be watching that closely. Usman and Leon, you're not too far away from being in the discussion with those guys. Who do you think wins? Do you think Leon has a chance? Um, I mean, everybody has a chance, but I, I, I really feel like Usman is, uh, is he's going to win. You know what I mean? Usman's uh he's, he's still evolving. He's, he's, he's on another level than Leon. I think, I don't know. And I can't, I haven't seen too many of Leon's fights like recently to kind of judge his skills right now. So we'll just see, I guess. Yeah. I think, I think Leon's going to give him a, I mean, Leon's look good as of late. I know he hasn't been very yeah. active and I know people like to talk about the Nate Diaz fight, you know, the last minute of it, yeah. ignoring the first 24 minutes and even the Bilal fight. I think he was going to win that fight uh, before the eye poke. So I don't think this is the same Leon as seven years ago when they fought. Yeah, no, nah, for sure. And also, Usman coming off uh, hand surgery. You never know how someone's going to feel after that. Yeah, I mean, quarters on shot will fix that. Okay, fair enough. You would know better <laughs> than I fight. would. Um, so hopefully you, you want to fight, you want to return by the end of the year. One more. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm really looking at the uh, MSG card. I want on it, but uh, for sure I want something by the end of the year. And I, I want it to be with fans. I, I don't... Yeah. I I. I love that that UFC is putting on fights every week, and it has sometimes they have to be at the apex. But I, I want some fans this time. Uh, and and why? More fans, I mean. Right, really, yeah, yeah, no, I get it. Uh, why? Imagine that card, by the way, on Saturday with fans. How crazy it would have been! It would have been, it would have been great. Like, like that, the whole that would card have made the win that much better with all those finishes. All finishes, yeah, yeah. Um, That'd been awesome. Why MSG? Any particular reason? I don't know. That, that's the first thing that came to mind. And uh, I think Ryan Spann is going to just try to get on that car too. So get on the car with some fans. Uh, it's Madison Square Garden. You know what I mean? That's like, that's a historic uh, venue. You know what I mean? So I would, I would love to fight there and uh, have a teammate with me too. So, yeah. Man, your story is cra- I mean, I still can't believe kidney failure, heart failure, sepsis, right? 
Yeah, septic, uh, I went in septic shock, and that's when the uh, heart failure and the uh, kidney failure came God, in. Dang. At any point, were you pr- were you pronounced dead or no? No, no, I wasn't dead yet. Okay. No. I, but I was, I was, I was uh, responsible for like a good 20 minutes, they said. It, it was bad. It was this whole, like, I, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. You know what I mean? Like, it, it was it was torture. Man. And did they know, did they figure out what, like, triggered it? No, but I, I'm assuming it came from a bad tooth. A bad tooth? A bad tooth. Yes, just like I, I was looking it up. I was, yeah, I was looking it up and I was like, how can you get sepsis and yada, yada, yada after I got out? And they were like, uh, sepsis could come from a, like a, like a, an affected tooth. You know what I mean? And I had a, a bad tooth in the back of my, uh, back of my mouth that I just completely neglected and, uh, didn't pay attention to it because it, it would hurt. But then like it eventually just stopped hurting, but I knew it was still bad and it needed to get pulled out. But then I got sepsis and I looked all that up. And then, uh, first thing I did, uh, after I got out of the hospital, I got that tooth pulled. Damn. So like the infection can trigger all of it. Yeah. Cause it, it, it gets, it gets into your bloodstream and that's what, that's what causes sepsis. Wow. Yeah. How long did you have that for? Like, how long did you neglect it for? <laughs> About like what three years? <laughs> what you had a bad tooth for three years? How did you eat with that? Know, it started off as like a cavity, and then like it just progressively got worse. You know what I mean? Why didn't you go check it out? <laughs> I'm an uh, idiot. Uh, I would never make that mistake again. Did it get did, like? Did it hurt when you get punched in the face? No, like it. Like I said, it 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 it, it would hurt. It like it started off hurting for like a like a year, and then like I was like I need to go to the dentist and then it stopped hurting, but it was still bad. You know what I mean? So the, once it stopped hurting, I was like, okay, well, I guess I don't need to worry about this tooth anymore. Damn. You know what I mean? How far back but was I it? Guess, how far back? Uh, way in the back. Oh man. So like when you, when you ate food, did it bother you all the time? Yeah. I'll have to chew on the other side of my mouth. Yeah. Jeff, what the hell, man? No one told you to get, that's crazy. Hey. You didn't go to the dentist hey. for three years. Uh, hey, 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 don't judge me. I mean, I hate to <laughs> yeah. say it, but I'm nah, judging yeah. you right now. Yeah, it's judge me. No, I, got, <laughs> I got a dinner appointment actually in two weeks. I'm not fucking up again. Oh my <laughs> God. That is that is unbelievable yeah. that a bad tooth can lead to all of that. Holy smokes. Yeah. Just admit, a bad tooth took me out. Like what? Wow. <laughs> Twitter. <tooth>. Yeah. <laughs> did they know that? Like, did they, did you figure that out on your own? I, I figured that out on my own. I'm, but I'm not, but I'm not hundred percent sure that's what, yeah, actually yeah, calls yeah. it you know what i mean but uh i i came to the conclusion that that's what it was because the doctors had no idea you know what i mean right but now that they took it out no issues no issues at all when they took it out what did it look like i didn't look at it i didn't look at it but what the dentist say it, it, dentist was like damn you had this in your mouth this whole time oh uh, <laughs> <laughs> man all right well i'm glad you're okay Congrats on the win. You look great. The whole team on fire, like we said. Uh, and I hope you get that fight. I think it makes a lot of sense. I feel like there's a oh, chance yeah, that I you get it. it. I feel like there's a chance. I, I do too. I, I really want it. I, like, I, 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 fingers crossed. I want that fight. All right. Good luck, Jeff. Thanks for doing this. Congrats. Right, thank you, brother. All right. There thank he is. You. Jeff Neal joining us. Uh, appreciate his time very much. Big win. That is crazy. Um, Some unfortunate news. Uh, Juliana Pena has some personal things that she has to attend to, so she's not going to join us, Frank, at uh, 3 (laughs) o'clock. That's, I mean, I'm sad about the news, but that was pretty well well done. So we'll do uh, GC's picks at 3 o'clock, all right? If that's okay with you guys. Um, Wow. All my teeth hurt all of a sudden. Yeah, the wow is not about the Julia. I mean, always a bummer when we've only had uh, how many uh, cancellations have we had since we returned? We had Caesar Gracie, and there was another one. Who's the other one? Who my opinion? No, no, no. I think this is three. Didn't we have someone else? Anyone remember? There was someone else. Definitely Caesar. Was just Gracie. Was it really just Gracie? In a year, we only had one cancellation. This would make two. I know, but it's not three o'clock. I'm holding out hope that she's going to jump back in. Not going to happen, by the way. Um, anyway, apologies for that. Uh, but she said maybe uh, next week or something like that. Do we ban? Back in the day when people didn't show up, we banned them. Like we once banned Ben Folks for a while. I am starting to remember um, Woman Fighter. Woman Fighter. Oh, Paige. 
There you go. There it is. And, wow. And they had a good reason. And they came uh, back the next show. Well, the, mm, no, it was like a month. Oh, wait. Actually, TJ, too. Now they're all coming back. See, I knew it was more than one. TJ Dillshaw. Remember he said he had bad service? Uh, yeah. I feel your sympathy. Uh, never fun. One time, famously, Brendan Schaub. Brendan Schaub canceled at the last minute. I don't believe that. It's true. And I banned him. Never met him. Yeah. Uh, now New York Rick is is advocating for a ban. For Pena? Yeah. Uh, now Jamal is telling me that the the link that I sent him didn't work. I mean, everything's falling apart here. What's going on? One, two, one. He's one, right? He should be. You guys have him there. This is the real He's sausage. Working on him. Just talking about that lady Morgan. You sure about that? Yeah, we've had some people banned. Ben Folks was banned. Brendan Schaub was banned. Um, I feel like I, I upheld the Brendan one for quite some time. Perhaps a little foreshadowing there. There might have been another one. I don't remember who. But anyway, no, I'm not. Given the reason that she gave me, uh, I am not going to ban her. I'm sorry, okay? All you bloodthirsty. But you can't tell us the reason. What? No, uh, no. She said it's personal. Okay. I'm not that type of guy, Frank. Um, but in a moment, we're going to be joined by Jamal Hill, and afterwards, we're going to be joined by Dominic Cruz and then Cheeto Vera again. Can't wait for the uh, main event this coming Saturday. Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. Um, and then we'll get GC's picks. Well, the recap of the picks from this past weekend. We just did the recap of the parlay. 3-0. and Three weeks in a row. Two of those weeks with Mysterious Frank. We are killing it. A little bit nervous about this week. No sure things. So I'm nervous. But uh, we can draw from the Bellator card, the PFL card, UFC card, not the Contender Series card. Well, we can do Contender Series, I think, but they have to be under, what do you say, 999? Yeah, but we do it on Wednesday. No Contender Series. Oh, no Contender. Okay. Wow, I didn't realize that. Um, so there's a lot to choose from, but just nothing that is sticking out right now. Unfortunately, we're not getting the Alexa Grasso versus Viviani Araujo fight, which I thought was going to be a great fight and a fight that was very important to the weight class the 125 pound weight class but uh back in san diego where they've had some shows before they had uh the john jones matt yushenko fight card they had what else did they have there uh diaz daily um a couple of wcs in fact cruz fought on a wc card way back in the day over there um in san diego his adopted hometown for now though let us say hello to our old friend jamal hill who had the big win this past weekend over tiago santos what's up jamal how are you my man why now Eric? how you doing just chilling over here admiring your work from this past weekend congratulations you feeling good about it you happy right. with the performance the win everything that came with it i mean it's always things that i feel like i can improve on so um i'm looking i, I look at those but yeah i'm happy with the win. It's, it was, uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a chance for me to show, like, more than just the, the power, whatever that people say, you know, just, yeah. so I, got, I got to show some heart. I got to show some different things. By the way, I love this setup. Where are we right now? Uh, I'm at the PI. I'm outside. I was actually eating lunch. Oh, my bad. Sorry for disturbing you. No, no, you good. You, st you, good. you still in Vegas? Yeah, I'm still out here. I'm out here until tomorrow. Oh, okay. Um, well, I appreciate you doing this over there. It looks beautiful out there. How's the food, by the way? I've never had it. No, it's good, man. They got, um, they got some pretty good chefs on here. They make some really good food. Here. Yeah, is it free? You don't have to pay for it, right? Of course. That's the best. Works every job. <laughs> um, so what, it, it, you said there's always things you'd like to improve on. What would you like to improve on? Like, what didn't you like from the, the fight? Um... Just tighten up more, tighten up a little bit more technically. Um, if I'm gonna draw somebody into a fight, uh, out into a firefight, which, you know, I kind of got a little impatient, you know, just be a little bit more patient, and uh, 
um, making sure my making sure my uh my like for the pace for the pace that I feel like it was I feel like my guy saying I still could have fought the whole fight but I want to have I want to be able to fight at more of a higher output. Okay, you know what I'm saying and be more effective with my higher output. What about cardio? A little bit more, a little bit sharper on the cardio. Okay, were you feeling tired? Yeah, and it surprised me because I I never get tired. Like I really don't ever get tired for real. So um, I think I think just how strong he felt in those clinches. Like like people say like oh uh, he made you think like oh uh, he's not like a grappler or nothing. Like that's still a strong ass dude. You know what I'm saying? And like he was he had a he had a nice grip, man. He was strong. He's a big boy. I think that wore a little bit. Yeah. Tougher than you thought he would be? Uh, no. I expected him to be tough. Okay. I expected him to be tough. Um, I expected, but what I did, what he did, I was expecting him to want more of a fight. Like, I really had to go after him for him to actually fight me, you know? Um, I was expecting it. I didn't expect me to have to go after him and go after him as hard for him to force a fight out of him as much. Um, I thought the finish went, you know, the end went way too long. Like, what was going on over there? I felt like they could have been stopped yeah, like man. ten seconds earlier. Were you thinking the yeah, same? Yeah, I, I felt like, yeah, I was thinking like, what more do I have to do? Right. Like, I'd already caught him with, I'd already was already catching him with clean shots, standing up so much though that he just kind of buckled and went down, and then, you know, just landing clean, landing clean shots. I mean, I get it. The hammer fists weren't weren't really hard. They were just. More so to make him cover up, but when I started landing after those hammer fists, when I started landing those shots, those shots are hard, bro. Those are hard, clean shots, you know. And I follow through. I follow through on everything, no matter how short the distance is. So he ate some hard shots, and yeah, I felt like it could have been stopped. Whenever he fell back flat, and I, and I landed those shots on the uh, to the side of his head. Then I love what you said afterwards. Something about like stop talking to me about experience. What did you? What was the line that you said in the post fight? It was great about like how there's a difference between like you and the guys that he's fought, something like that. It was a great line. You nailed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They uh, cause they, yeah, everybody who's talking every time I fight somebody, they're like, oh, I, all my experience. I think I got the experience. The experience. How can you have experience over something you've never experienced? Oh yeah, that's a good line. You know, that's a great line. That's what, that's that's the thing. You've never experienced anybody like me, so no, you don't have the experience of it. I've seen. I fought many power punches. Many just. But big bombers, I fought those guys. I've sparred those guys. I've done all of that, so I've seen plenty of guys like that. Like like Jan says, Polish power things. I've seen guys with powerful with powerful hands that have a nice that have a nice a nice little wing and hook in the, uh, that they like to sneak in there, you know. Um, that mix in the wrestling well and things like that. Like I fought these guys, My, like Magomed, a technical striker who's like you know who's who's a little bit more sharp and mixes in sharper takedown. Honestly, that's more so what I like. What I prefer to fight, I prefer to, I prefer to fight a technical guy. I don't like the brawlers for real. You know, you got to get you got to get a little dirtier to fight them. Mm. So okay, so this is a big win. Uh, that's three in a row now. Three finishes. You're on fire. Do you feel like you're, you're you're in the mix now? Do you feel like okay now now we're now we're gonna start to get some big names, some big cards, some big spots? Do you feel like you've arrived? Yeah, I feel like it's I feel like it's that time. I mean, I feel like I arrive whenever they come, whenever those moments and those things have already landed here for me and I uh arrive on that doorstep. But as of right now, I feel like the opportunity should be there. Uh and also main event spot, you deliver for the UFC. By the way, did you feel did you feel any nerves being in the main event? No. You didn't it's care. It's another day at the office. I love it. It's business as usual. It's what I do every day. You always show up with those fly suits. Who gets you those suits? Who makes those for you? Uh, I got a I got a guy back home that I uh, that I collab with me and get together and we, we see what I what I'm feeling like, what I like to do. So I pick out my own suits. You you look great, one of one. But I have to say, like I feel like those th those are those are bigger. Th that's like an MSG. We're showing it right now where you were rocking. I mean, you look fantastic. But that's MSG suit right there. That's 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 T-Mobile yeah. suit. I mean, you showing up to the Apex with that suit. I mean, you're classing up the joint. That's like me. whoa, whoa, whoa. What I'm just saying. That's my that's my house. Don't, you gonna try to tell me what to wear in my house? <laughs> I'm just saying. It's like you're overdressed for the Dream Apex. Stadium. That's <laughs> that's nah, sweet dreams. No, nah, no, nah, that's sweet dream stadium. You you put your best foot forward when you show up at my house. And that's why you get the results that you did this car, historical car.
That's all right. fantasy. That's true. Come on, that's Come true. on, baby. Come on, baby. I think I was dressed for the occasion. What you think? I th- I think you're fantastic. I mean, you look great. You look like a million bucks. No one dresses better than you on the whole roster. But I'm tired of seeing you dress like that to the apex. I, I want to see some other. You know, it, you got to admit, yeah, I, you deserve to be in an arena. Show me off to the world. Yes. You agree? Like that pretty girl need to be shown off a that, little bit. That's what I'm talking about. Ground. Come on. Put me up, take, me, take me to the beach. That's right. Enough with the apex. There's five people there. You deserve to be fighting in front of 15,000 people. I'm trying to hype you up. I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm like, I'm liking what you're feeding me here, Ariel. What about the people who talk about the physique? All right, what's going on over there? What they look like. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because most of them don't even have profile pictures. They don't even put themselves on, like, not even at their face. So that's funny. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not built like most, like most guys at 205. Like you know, they, they, they have a lot of muscle. They're bulkier and built and things like that. And um, I don't feel the need to be built that way. You know, um, I'm not. I'm actually not flabby. I'm actually not big. I'm solid. Like if you actually feel, like felt my frame and everything like that, I'm solid. Man. Tiago just had bigger muscles. My frame was bigger than his was. You know? Um, I don't know, man. It's just it's just one of those weird things people are obsessed with, like the visual. Mm. Does it annoy you? It's funny. I mean, you lean into it, right? I saw you rocking the Speedos yeah. on that week. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. It gives me, hey, man, I, 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 take, it, I take anything where I can uh, make, make a laugh or, you know what I mean, spend some content out of it. I mean, look, we've had some guys, you know, like Roy Nelson back in the day had a massive stomach and he was, you know, a title contender. So it's not a big deal. Did, did your coaches ever tell you we need to change this? We need to change that? Or this is just who you are? This is your body type? My coach has been with me since I was 18. You know what I mean, we've been rocking this whole time. So I don't, they're, not, they're not too interested in changing things up. Mm. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I did like at the post-fight press conference, you had your whole team sitting behind you there. Why did you do that? Cause they needed to see what uh they needed to see who uh what makes sweet dreams go. What the fuck? You all right? I was losing for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My phone. But um, they needed to see who they needed to see who makes sweet dreams sweet dreams. They needed to see uh who's all behind me. You know, uh the, the coaches, the teams don't really get credit like that. You know, as fighters, we get a lot of credit. I get fans that come up to me and say. You know, I wanted to have a moment in on, on, on the, on, in the spotlight with my guys that helped me behind the scenes. Hmm. You know, I wanted them in the spotlight too. I, I thought that was great. It says a lot about you that you would do that. Uh, what they do for me every day says a lot. It says even more about them. Hmm. And so afterwards, okay, so we're talking about big names. I really, I, we were trying to figure this out at the top of the show. I don't know, because because I'm assuming Yuri's going to fight Glover again. It seems like that's the direction. That's it. That's what it's looking like. How do you feel about that? You like the rematch? What do you think? I don't I don't I don't mind it, but I'm just, you know, it's just been that back and forth, like, oh, is the rematch gonna happen? Shit. If you want another option out there, I'm gonna throw myself out there as another option. You know? I don't know what's going on with them. I don't know what everybody's health is like or none of that, but I'm but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put it out there and stay. I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to go. Even if it's the even if it's for the title. I'm ready to go. You're gonna jump all these guys you want in already. I don't give a damn. Yeah, we've seen it before. That's how he got the belt. He jumped. Right. He jumped and got the belt. Go down a weight class. Alex Pieta. That's not a jump. That's true. You know, like, everybody else getting jumped around. Why not jump see dreams around? Yeah. And how do you feel you would match up with uh, Yuri? I feel I match up with Yuri phenomenally. I feel like that would be a phenomenal fight. And I feel like, um, I feel like I, I feel like I can take that fight. I feel like it would be a great fight. It's a great show. And I feel like it would be very marketable. What did you think of his performance against Glover in June? Uh, I think he showed a lot of toughness. I think he showed uh, showed uh, great athleticism, um, great strength, durability, and physical ability. But uh, I also saw some things in uh, holes in his game that I can take that I can take advantage of, and things that I do well that I feel will give him, you know, what I mean, give him trouble or ultimately be lead to his downfall. Like what? Like how he takes clean shots. When he gets hit clean, he's stunned for a second and he stands there for a second. I don't just hit you with one clean shot. I come for more. Mm. I come for multiple. 
You know, um, I don't think he's ready for that. I, I, I see he likes the flow. He's a flow fighter. I'm a flow fighter, too. I like the flow, too. So yeah. if they run it back, you think he wins? I don't know. I don't know. So if they run, I think, I think possible. If they run it back and, and then they have Magomed fight Jan, who's left for you? I guess that kind of leave me in the wings, huh? Yeah. Because Smith is Smith and Rackage is, is, is hurt. Right hurt. Now. Yeah, but that's what we were trying to figure out. It's like you're on fire right now. And, you know, we got Glover yeah. and Yuri. We got Jan and Magomed. Rakic is out. Smith is out. You just beat Santos. Uh, they just booked Ozdemir. I thought maybe him. Right? Craig. Who did they book Ozdemir with? Uh, Krilov. Oh, yeah. They gave Krilov what he asked for. Yeah. What about Craig? Rematch with Craig? Um, that's like, I mean, yeah, that's definitely, that's definitely one I want to get back, but coming, but, but coming off of the, the performances that I'm coming off of and coming yeah. off of his last performance, that don't benefit me at all. Just to get it back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The other, I mean, if we talking, man, if we talking main event, if we talking main event pay-per-view, hell yeah, let's run. Right. The only other crazy you know one out saying? there is Dominic Reyes, but he's been out for a while. Been out for a while, yeah. We could, yeah. That's, a, uh, that's an interesting one. I, feel, I honestly, I think Dom. I think Dom needs like somebody that's not going to take his head off, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I mean, I think he needs. Well, obviously, everybody's coming to take your head off, but I think he needs like somebody a, a challenge that a more suitable challenge for where he's at to try to get him back on the track. I want to see Dom. I want to see Dom in a better form. I don't want to see Dom coming off of a loss, struggling with questions. I want to see Dom at, all right, he's, you know what I mean? There's certain guys that I want to see like that, like Magomed. I want to see Magomed like that. I want to see Magomed at the top. Like, if I go through all of these dudes up into a rise to a title, what am I supposed to do when I'm the champion? You know what I mean? Fighting for pay-per-views and shit. What, like, who am I supposed to fight? Like, who am I supposed to sell these? You know what I mean? Yeah. I like the way you think. Everybody wants it all at once. Everybody wants it all at once. Everybody wants it all right at now. Like, what, what about, like, I still got to make sure this business and everything, like, my story takes, right? You know what I mean? It's fruitful for me. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when we spoke last time, you said champ by 2023. You still feel that? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you're even more confident now. 100%. Yeah, I feel like I feel like uh way everything's shaping out, uh, we'll have a clear picture to it within the next few months of uh what's going on and then by the end of by the beginning of next year we'll see we'll see what it's like. I think we I mean, I think we'd be looking at a title shot. Uh, I saw you hanging out with Deontay Wilder. What was that like? Yeah, it was cool. Uh I, I bumped into him at the contender series and uh talked to him a little bit, asked him if he uh come out to my fight uh Saturday. He he showed up. He showed up. He came out. He came in the back. Sick. You know, just chopped it up with me. You know, gave me some champ champion advice. You know, just uh and just just talking. You know, just shooting the breeze, being cool. You know, showing support and showing love. First time you meet him? Yeah, that was the first time I met him. He's a uh, he's a he's a very humble guy and he's a very uh very ins inspiring person. Yeah. I I think he's training at the PI, right? I haven't seen him. Okay. Actually, I haven't seen him. Yeah, not here. What do you do? Uh, like, well, actually, I think I did see a video of him training. Yeah, actually. Francis was there. I think. Yeah, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, okay. Isn't it great on the Monday? Yeah, I like to see him back in there. Yeah, me too. Isn't it great on the Monday after a big win? You walk into the PI like you're the man. You just won in the main event. Everyone's like, yeah. you know, like you could take it easy. You could eat whatever you want. You could chill out. Don't you feel like like a million bucks right now? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, no, yeah, I limped into, I limped into the. Yeah, but it's like, good, isn't it good so, you know, kind of limping? Yeah, no, it's a good feeling. Yeah, it's a, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a good. You don't feeling. have to worry about a fight for a minute. Ooh. You're walking in there. I freaking, I ran this what place. You worry about a fight, and I'm mad, man. I wanna, I wanna, I want. I'm ready to go, man. Really? Go. That's the thing about it, bro. I wanna fight, bro. I'm ready to fight, bro. I had to, I had to wait six months for this. Yes. You know, you, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired of waiting. How soon you want to fight? Like ideal world, they say when you want to come back. As soon as, as soon as I'm, as soon as my leg good to go, and I'm able to get back and go in the gym going hard, I'm ready to go. What's wrong with your leg? Uh, this is a little, just a little swelling, inflammation, bruising, and things like that. You know, I, I ate some, I had to eat some things. You know what I mean to get on the inside to get that finish. No break though. No.
Did we lose Jamal? He's still online. One sec. It's possible that his phone overheated. Remember that second show? Oh, yeah. Back in August with GSP? Were you here for that, Frank? I was. I remember. All right. I guess we'll... I mean, I was just about to wrap it up. I like Jamal Hill. He's a character. He's fun. It is a very interesting time for him. If he wants to come back quickly... Look, none of those fights, by the way, that we talked about are actual sure things. Like, they haven't booked Glover versus Yuri. They haven't booked Jan versus Magomed. I'm just sort of hypothesizing. Jan versus Jamal would be fun. I mean, by the way, there's a chance that Magomed, you know, just fought. Maybe he doesn't want to turn around so quickly and fight Jan. I don't know. Jan versus Jamal would be a really interesting fight. Big step up, although they're probably going to, you know, refresh these rankings in a moment. And with Rakic and Smith out, Hill versus Jan would be really interesting. But 205, there was a moment there at 205 where things were getting a little bit stale, very shallow, uninteresting. No longer the case. It's a very international weight class. Ryan Spann out there, Dustin Jacoby out there. Paul Craig did stumble. Ozdemir back. Looks like we're not going to be able to get him back. What happened? Like maybe his phone did overheat. Oh, wow. We can't reach him. What a day. (laughs) Uh, Should I text him? Oh, you could try, but we're not getting through either. Um, let's see. Da, na, 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 na. Da, I don't think we have a license for that. Oh. That's from, uh, you know a movie that's from? No, I feel like I've heard it in a lot of movies. No, it's a famous scene. Ba. He's waiting on hold. I feel like we had this conversation already. Here he comes. Oh. Is he coming back? Yeah. You just told me he wasn't going to come back. Oh, well, it changed. Cable guy. You ever see oh, that? Oh, yeah, but that's not where that originated. No, from. of course, but he's on hold and he's like... Okay. Da, da, da. Um, that's a great... I mean, one of the more... Oh, yeah, okay. He says he's jumping back. Why are you telling me he's not, Frank? Well, so Fake we're... news. Fake news. Look at the screen. Yeah. You still there, Jamal? Yeah. Yeah, I'm here. You know, it's hot out in Vegas. My phone being outside. It overheated? Yeah. Oh, no. It's what I suspected. Can we see him or no? No, it was a little bit. I can hear you, but I can't. You can hear me? All right. I I don't like to end conversations. Like, you still there, though? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I'm here. I can hear you. I was I was about to wrap it up anyway, so I don't want to take. Uh, I just wanted to know how. Like, what are you doing in Vegas? You celebrating? What are you doing over there? I'm getting treatment in the PI right now. You, you're um, not. You're not turning up. Man, I gotta be able to walk to turn up. <laughs> <laughs> not even on Saturday. I'm sorry, no, I'm, I did turn up. I turned up. Yeah, I turned up. I went to a. I had VIP at a couple of spots. I went. I went pulled up to. Uh, some you. tables. Uh, I just been chilling, hanging out with the family. I'm out to chill today, and then I'm flying home tomorrow. All right. Well, you enjoy yourself out there. Get well soon. Congrats on the win. Appreciate you doing this, my man. Thank you. Appreciate you having me. All right. There he is, Jamal Hill. Sweet dreams. Uh, big win for him at Sweet Dreams Stadium this past Saturday, AK the Apex. Uh, later on in the program, we're going to be joined by Cheeto Vera and Dominic Cruz. Uh, No Juliana Pena this week. Some personal things happened and she has to reschedule. So reschedule, excuse me. So uh, I apologize if you were just tuning in for that, but we will get it done. We always get it done. TJ didn't show up. Then we had him on a few weeks later. Have no fear. Maybe we'll have her on Wednesday. Maybe we won't. Uh, Before we get to GC's recap of this past weekend, his official recap, uh, a quick word from our good friends over at DraftKings Sportsbook. Guys, I want you to get in on the hottest sports action for your shot at cold, hard cash with DraftKings Sportsbook. Bet on your favorite sports all summer long and gear up for football season right now. New customers can get a risk-free bet of up to $1,000. Just make your first bet up to $1,000. And if it doesn't hit, you'll get another shot at a big win. 
Feel the thrill of every sports season in a whole new way by betting on baseball, golf, MMA, and more. Plus, with same-game parlays, spreads, money lines, over-unders, and props, your betting options, well, they feel endless. Best of all, DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. Deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code DMMAR. Make your first deposit and get a risk-free bet of up to $1,000. That's promo code DMMAR. H-O-U-R. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Check in with GC now again at his recap. Sorry for bumping you up here, but these things happen when you're doing a live program, GC. There he is. Look at that. Yeah, everyone tuning in for Juliana Pena. And here he and is. Bill shirt. Yes. <laughs> the uh, former bantamweight champion. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I feel like you can hit 135. How much do you weigh? Mm, I don't know. Dude, too I'm tall? Yeah, yeah, too tall. I could probably get down to lightweight. Have a nice reach advantage. Yeah, we've seen some. I mean... 6'1", 155, we've seen it. We've seen a couple of 6, 145s back in the day. Too crazy? All right, me versus Volk. I mean, there's not that much for you to lose there. I mean, you're pretty, yeah. Yeah, pretty and, thin. Right, right. I'm coming in at like 170 right now. By the way, how was City Field? It was great. First time? Tough to get to, yeah. First time there. Is it really tough? Take the 7 train. I guess from Brooklyn it's tough, right? Yeah, I, I should have taken the 7. I Ubered, and it's just chaos. You Ubered? Yeah. Oh, that was a huge mistake. Chaos. Man, chaos. you're killing it so much with the picks, you were able to Uber it. Yep, that's exactly right. I was about to take the subway, and I was like, nah, I'm killing it with the picks. I'm going to just Uber. <laughs> right? I mean, did you did you really think that? Yep. Yeah. How much is that Uber? more coming in tonight. Well, I split it with five people, so it, Wait, was, it was only like 55 bucks. And What's coming in tonight? Bucks. I was saying on Saturday, I was like, I got more. I got oh, more got it, tonight. got it. And you did. Yeah, we did. It's a great uh, segue. Yeah, that was a great segue. Uh, well, I was going to say one thing about the oh. Mets. Impressive yeah. fan base. Really? They were, they, I mean, maybe I'm just mistaken, but a game in August, they were super hype, super Well, they're doing really well. Doing really well, and they're playing, playing the, know, rivals. the divisional rivals. But they, I was impressed by Did how, Edwin how Diaz much. come out? Uh, the Braves were the Braves were getting hammered. I left before the ninth. Wow! Yeah. What was the score? It's like six nothing in like the eighth. Man, your team can make a comeback. You're seeing them on the road. You bailed. Well, yeah, they didn't. They did. And I'm glad that I did because the subway was crazy on the way back. Oh, you took I was, the subway back. I was jammed in with everyone streaming the Terrence McKinney fight. Oh my fight. gosh! Masks? No masks? No. Nah. Hot, uh, sweaty. Oh, nasty. yeah. I've been on those before. Gross. I've been on those before. Um, yeah, I saw you took a great picture watching the fights at the... Uh, I was at wondering... Field, yeah. Yeah, how'd you take the picture? You have two phones? Yeah. Yeah, I had a... I, you know, I got a team with me. This was the uh, the question that you got when you were at the restaurant. But how'd yeah. you take the picture? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the, everyone that I'm with has a phone. That's yes. how we did it. Yes. Uh, well, City Field is beautiful. I haven't been there in a very long time. One of my favorite stadiums. Yeah, it's a bit it of like an old school feel to it. You know what I mean? Nice stadium. Nice stadium. How great is that walkout? Edwin Diaz? I know. That video? I know. I didn't know about it until I saw the, the video. I don't even know if he weekend. played. Like, would he come out in a 6 nothing game? Maybe. That guy's the man. The man. Sick walkout. When they, when they lean in like that, and really it's like just playing up combat sports. Everyone loves a good walkout with song, dancing, music. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, it's great. I love it. I've watched yeah, that like clip the, a Mr. Times. and Mrs. Met with the trophy. With the uh, the trumpet. Trumpet, yeah. Trump. Now, my question is, was there like a camera guy following him from the the outfield? I guess so, right? From that yeah. angle? Yeah, and then he just veers off at the yeah. end. Incredible. Baseball's a pretty, yeah, a couple people were like, how are you watching the game and the fights? I was like, have you ever watched a baseball game before? Like, it, it moves pretty slow. I love going to baseball games. I do too. I haven't been to, especially beautiful summer night, nothing yeah. better. It's not like it's like a hockey game, though, and you have to be watching it the whole time. Sure. But just it, the, it, like baseball, the experience of just being outside on a summer night, it's part social, part, you know, fun. You're probably paying attention to 40% of the game, if that. Exactly. Right? That's what it was. Yeah. Anytime, you know, there was two strikes or it was getting exciting, we'd, we'd really get into lock it. in. But yeah, it was great. Beautiful night. I think I'm going to go to uh, Jay's Yankees next week. That'll be great. Haven't been to one in a Went to Yankee Stadium a few weeks ago, too. Oh, yeah. When was that again? Who'd you see? <sighs> the First, Reds. Oh, the Reds. That was a weird one, yeah. Um, all right, so how did we do? We did great. 
We did Killing great. It. Let's, yeah, let's start it off. Uh, the singles. You know, we lose Anthony Pettis. Frank, thank you for the condolences. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> the McKinney doesn't go the distance, turned into a single because we lost a couple fights. Uh, I would never play a minus 525 as a single, but, uh, you know, the parlay got voided everywhere else. Jeff Neal by decision. Uh, I was actually heartbroken there. It was really looking like he was going to pull it off. And didn't uh, you add this later on? I added it later on. What prompted that? I felt pretty good about Jeff Neal all week. I just hadn't pulled the trigger on him, and I got greedy. I was like, Luke has never been knocked out. There's no way Neal is going to submit him. Let's just hope Luke holds up and Jeff Neal gets it done. And after the first round, I was like, oh, baby, this is coming in. Like, I, we're going to hit this. Uh yeah, I was like actually screaming when Luke went out. I was like, yeah, I was I was sad. I was like, no, no, uh, it was bad. You just felt. I mean, it was a great win for him, but yeah. Oh yeah, great win. But I, I really like Jeff Neal. I like the way he fights. So uh, parlays, clean sweep, five and zero oh, across the board. Wow, feels good. That is you're, amazing. You're a part of one of them with the MMA or parlay. Oh, I got uh, the nod in there. Oh Which yeah, one is that the fourth one? Yeah, oh. plus. Fifth one plus one forty seven. Right, right there it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean we're like twelve and two on parlays over the last three weeks. Not gonna hold, but it's nice to be on a run like this. I cannot I lie. That, so that brings us to the final recap: two and two on singles, five and zero oh on the parlays. We end up plus five point nine on the week. We are now up over thirty six on the year, forty eight point four six all time. We are wow closing in. We can smell fifty now. We can see fifty. You can get fifty we'll by this soon. weekend, right? If all goes well. That would be sick. That would be fantastic. Yeah, up 1.54 would get us to 50. That would give us four straight winning weeks. That would be uh, that would Have be Have you ever nice. been on a run like this before? Uh, I've never tracked it like this right. before, so right. I don't know. Like, I, I've always, like, kind of loosely tracked it, but, like, this is the most where it's, like, track it every week, have to recap it every single week. So, yeah, we're doing well. We are, we are certainly profitable, uh, and that's the goal. That is the goal when it comes down to this. Um I'm not the only one that did well. I mean, these big hitters are getting tougher and tougher every single week. People are just cashing out left and right, so let's get into it. This one was crazy. Wild in West Virginia. This one almost made the Hall of Fame. He goes, Sergey Spivak, KO in round two or three. Juliana Miller, KO or decision. Muhammad Usman, KO or decision. Jeff Neal, KO or decision. Jamal Hill in rounds three, four, or five. Plus 89,561. He turns one dollar into eight hundred and ninety-six dollars. Wow, I mean, crazy. Wild in West Virginia. He said it was his friend. He didn't provide the friend's name, so he's going to get credit for this one. That is nuts. Could you imagine? No, but I like- can't. <laughs> and then you get into rounds three, four, and five, and especially after that round three where uh, Tiago Santos was like controlling the whole fight, and you're just like, come on, Jamal. Like we got two rounds to finish this thing off here. Crazy, crazy, man. I- I'd lose my mind. Um, next up, two guys, Joshua Price and Cole Walderman. Both go 10 for 10. Hit the entire card correctly over a, what? plus 11,000 each. Yes. Uh, Josh, he turns 22 cents into $57. Cole turns uh, $10 into 1100 Like, going 10 for 10, that's just crazy. That's just crazy. I, I don't know if, I, if I'll ever successfully hit every fight. Uh, on a card. Next up, Derek Jablonski. I don't even <laughs> Wait, know what. <laughs> I heard someone laugh over there. Who just laughed at Jablonski? JJ. <laughs> it's a, is it a real name? It's a real name. That's that's his name. That's what he sent me on Twitter. A plus 9,993. I mean, you almost had to be at plus 10,000 to make it to big hitters this week. And I tried to shout out as many people as I could. I'm sorry if you did not make it. He turns $10 into 1000 uh, I don't even know some of these. S. Ryan, M. Conlon, uh, Asparza, V. Ortiz Jr. I'm guessing that's boxing. But then he had Spivak, Usman, Buena Silva. Um, yeah, I mean, shout out to him. That's these these people are just cashing out. Could you imagine if you did a parlay of all ten winners, but via finish, like not going the distance? I can't even imagine what that would pay out because I tweeted earlier during the show, if you took all 10 fights to not go the distance and parlayed them, it would have paid out at plus 33,936. Oh, you tweeted that? Yeah. Plus what? Plus 33,936. Oh my God. I'm going to, after this, I'm going to figure out what it would be if you parlayed them all, uh, all the winners by finish. Um, speaking of winning by finish, 
Jug B and Blues 14 goes Juliana Miller round three KO plus 8,100 turns $14 into 1134. And he said he placed this while she was walking out. Wow. <laughs> I don't know what would whisper in your ear to put $14 on Juliana Miller, <laughs> round three KO, but cheers to you, man, because that is unbelievable. I love Ladbrokes. Where's that from again? Australia? Yeah, Australia or New, New Zealand. I think it's down under. I love their winning ticket. They give you the confetti. They make you feel Oh, it's nice. awesome. Yeah. Um, last but not least, he demanded a shout out. Demanded? But he had, I was like, yeah, I saw it. He was like, I demand a shout out. I was like, we'll see about that, but. It was a really solid ticket, plus 9434 turns $3 into 286 I mean, he was all over the place. I'm not even going to list them out. It's big enough that people can read it. Uh, El Quat Romano, uh, seven-leg parlay, shout out, fantastic ticket. And then last but not least, I have a little video here oh. uh, that someone sent in uh, about the Jamal Hill fight. Uh, it is our man... It is our man Wiz Betts. He's over in Lebanon. This is 7 a.m. Him and all his boys cashing on Jamal Hill. This is kind of what I was doing. They were all going crazy. I think they're being quiet because people are still asleep. Oh, my God. Because it's 7 a.m. in Lebanon. But, yeah, he put $1,300 on Jamal Hill. He said it also finished up some parlays. I mean, I just love it. This is exactly what I was doing. I love that they're being quiet. Uh, the dude's wearing his uh, his undies. Yeah, they're over all there. in their underwear. They just woke, up. <laughs> they just woke up. I mean, celebrations all around. I love seeing stuff like that just because I was doing the same thing. My roommate was in the shower and he could he got out and he was like, uh, "What was Herb doing, man? Like I heard you just screaming, Herb, Herb, oh, stop geez, the fight, Herb, man." Um, so yeah, shout out to Wizbets, nice cash, and then the Draft King, uh, Rockus, Roxas. Wow, great picture of him. Yeah, he won. So shout out to him. Who do you have? Oh, man. I, I, always, I feel I like was, I always ask you this question. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was low-key hoping you wouldn't ask. But, okay, I'm uh, sorry. I mean, no, I'm, no, no. I actually have it right here. So it's, uh, it works out. Our man Rockus, he had, in his winning lineup, he drafted Jamal Hill, Jeff Neal, Muhammad Usman, uh, Juliana Miller, Oleg Chuck, and uh, Buena Silva. Shout out to him. Shout Roxas. out. Listen to all those shout outs, man. Uh, also, shout out to Joe. Shout out to Joe. He sent me the tickets, uh, but I got them too late. I didn't see them. Plus 1100. There he is. At PFL. He sent me the ticket too. I could have rode with him, and I was like, no, no, no. I'm riding with my boy Showtime. <laughs> yes, he actually went with uh, Stevie Ray, huh? Stevie Ray, and uh, he went against our boy Josh Silvera. He took us. Yes. Uh, yeah, Josh. Poor Josh. Uh, I mean, young guy. When Ahmedov walked into the cage and we were that close, I was like, mm. yeah. <laughs> Josh, you were like, I think Josh I, is in, yes, he looks quite <laughs> large. It was just like old man strength over there from yes, Ahmedov. That's what it, that's what it looked like. He had the old man confidence too. Like I'm older than this guy. I'm bigger than I've been training with him. Yeah. Tough spot for Josh. Felt for him. How about his dad showing up the next day to be in Tiago's corner? Tough weekend Crazy. for Tough uh, weekend. <laughs> Conan Silvera too. But uh, I mean, just saw his son lose his first pro fight and then he flies cross country to be in uh, Tiago Santos's corner. Yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, by the way, Big Joe, sneaky good better. Yeah. He's, he's had a couple of, like, 10 out of 11 parlays. Yeah. I won't lie. I was expecting it to happen again if, like, uh, Pettis pulled it off because I think, like, three different times he's gone 10 of 11, and it's been, like, uh, going against one of our picks we gave out on the show. Yes, that is true. There was one famous one, right? What was it? Uh I don't remember. Was it Cheeto or something? Where I, I picked, think it like, was, yes, I think it was Cheeto because we both picked him, and it was like, wow, you just... Yeah. Just gave us the bird straight to our face. Said we don't know anything. There's a couple of big ones coming up this weekend. What Next is, weekend. Yeah. We finally get a week off. What is uh what is Leon? Leon's yeah. like plus two eighty. Two eighty wow. The, ha the fact that you knew that off the top of your head is a little bit shocking. It's gonna be close to that. It's gonna be close. It I is mean, plus two eighty. <laughs> it is, yes. The fact that you knew that is incredible. Yeah. I mean, uh, plus two eighty. How do you feel about that? I don't know, man. I I like Kamaru. Like, yeah, he's good. Yeah, his I mean, brother he's, just won. I mean, he's really good. And uh, yeah, I feel like I finish a, a parlay every single time he fights. I, I feel like he's always finishing parlays for me. Hey, how about Luke Rockhold plus two thirty? Tasty. Wow. Oh, I didn't. I didn't realize he was the. What about Jose Aldo plus one hundred? Yeah, a lot of people are liking that. 
Someone was just on last week. Uh, who was it? I don't remember anything anymore. Just completely dismissing Marab. Was it TJ? Who yeah, was- man. I don't know, dude. I, I have such a I have such an emotional battle with that one because I love Marab, fellow Georgian. That's right. Sean I'm- Woodson fighting too. That two seventy eight one's gonna be great. Harry Hunsucker on the card. H Dow. <laughs> <laughs> Plus five forty? You kidding me? <laughs> Golly! Against uh, Tyson Pedro. Yeah, Tyson Pedro will be your parlay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, Harry Hunsucker <laughs> sounds like a fake name. <laughs> that doesn't even. I mean, I, just the more we say it, the more. I, I thought that that was a joke, by the way. Harry Hunsucker. Wow. <laughs> Plus five forty. What a crazy name. Yeah. Where's Harry Hunsucker from? Uh, we can find out. I'm going to find out right now. Harry Hunsucker. Harry Hunsucker is is nickname. <laughs> oh my god, his uh, his tapology pick is great. Harry the Hurricane Hunsucker, seven and five, age thirty three. He's lost two in a row. Justin Taffa and Tai Tuivasa. He fought Tai Tuivasa in March of twenty twenty one. I have no recollection of this. Wow, a rare loser on the Contender Series who ended up in the UFC. Yeah. Grounded and pounded by Jared Van Deren in the right. first round. <laughs> why? Why are you laughing? It. I mean, just to get ground and pounded by Jared Van Deren in the first round, and then that end up getting you a contract. Yeah, it's, it's well, a he good. fought. He fought another guy. He fought to get Corey Moon in the first round twice. Who I'm not sure is a real person either. Corey Moon, Harry Hunsucker. <laughs> Yo, check out Corey oh Moon's my gosh, topology I'm, look, pick. I'm looking at the poster right now. Hunsucker Moon, H R M M A. Saturday, February 27, 2020. Wait a second. Click on Corey Moon's picture on Tapology. It's him. We're getting deep into <laughs> This looks like this looks like he's at a he's at his he's local at like an Applebee's. Yes. <laughs> he's wearing the Smith and West. <laughs> this looks like a Friday night in rural Georgia. Oh my god, this poor guy. I mean, he's in he's in a booth. He's got like fried yes. poppers right next to him. That that drink is definitely an iced tea right next to him too. <laughs> oh man! And he's wearing like that looks like a, like a collegiate hat. He has. On. Yes. Shout out to Corey Moon. Wow, he got knocked out in forty five seconds against Hunsucker. Oh yeah, I'm looking at the poster. HR MMA uh, <laughs> one nineteen. I need to print this poster out. That is a good poster. Moon versus Hunsucker. <laughs> At the Sloan Convention Center in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Bowling Green, shout out. Why? Why, why shout out? You like Bowling Green? I don't know. I was going to say the Bowling Green Falcons, but I think that's Ohio. Mm. Bowling see- Green's the subway stop I use. Is uh, Did you watch that card, Frank? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> By the way, Frank, what did your uh, what did your wife think of the of the fights? Did she enjoy him? Yeah, you got to remember, she's a vet, dude. She went to Serrano. She went to UFC. That's true. Your wife has been to more fights than I have in the last couple months. Yeah, she pointed that out. She did. <laughs> no, no. Oh, all right. Um, but she enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, she seems to be enjoying herself. So, like uh, this weekend, PFL. You guys are gonna watch? You gonna make a night of it? Uh, I gotta work. Oh. I'll bring, the hors- I'll bring the hors d'oeuvres over. I'll serve you guys. You guys doing class. a PFL party? No. Oh. No. Next now it's like Kayla. the only PFL is if I'm ringside. That's right. You won't even watch it. Next week we can do a sleepover. Kayla into 278. Oh, that's right. And Anthony Joshua during the day. Oh my gosh. I forgot yeah. about that. Crazy. There's my... There's your Saturday sorted, as they yeah. say in England. Usyk. You're going with him? Is he the favorite in that? It's gotta be. I don't think he is. If Usyk is a dog, I, that's there's your age star right there. Let's see, let's see. By the way, this is what happens when someone yeah, yeah, cancels yeah, on yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I know. I was gonna say this is us <laughs> filling uh, for where Juliana Payne should be minus one ninety Usyk. Oh really? And yeah. what is uh plus one fifty coming back for Joshua? Okay, all right. Yeah, feels appropriate. Beat him last year, right? Yeah, I think so. All right, so there you have it. I'm excited about this week. I really don't know. Frank, you want to take that offer of going first, or are you like being a part of the team, just one of the boys with the Z? I want to uh, be on the draft. Okay, I like that. I okay, like so that. you wanted to get randomized. Yeah. I actually, he sent me four picks before the show, and I think they all were correct. What do you mean? 
Oh, really? Yeah, I think all four of them were right. He could have done his own. The, the you could have done your own parlay, Frank. Um, I might have to do that. Are you getting a little big-headed? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, what did he say on Saturday night? I can't remember, but I was like, this <laughs> This sounds like a group of people that are about to go on a six-parlay I was six like, it's just printing money street. at this point. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Printing money. Well, I hope you go for the main event, because I'm not touching that one. Wow, I'm actually shocked. I, I really, really? Yeah, th- I thought... I have a rule. I can't go against someone who's been on the show. That's a good rule. That's a I good mean, rule to have. It feels a little disrespectful. Plus, Plus it's, I, mean, I think it's going to be a close fight, dude. I, th- I think so, too. I'm shocked that you think that I would go this route. I'm, I'm trying to take the biggest favorite. <laughs> I, I, I'm not ready to give up on Dom. Dom is really good. He's won his last two in a row. He's fighting at home. He wants one more push. Uh, the whole division is wide open. If TJ wins, by the way, I can see him getting a title shot. As crazy as that sounds. And by the way, if Aljo wins, I could see him getting a title shot. Aljo on the crazy, show on, Monday, on Wednesday, by the way. Aljo, yes. Yeah. Let's go. I mean, there's a lot going on in the uh, in the bantamweight division. And I don't, I have no, I, I don't have any confidence. I, I'm, I'm very happy for Marlon. Truly one of the good guys in the game. Went back home. Remember I posted, we have that footage, right? Of him going back home at the school. Yeah, yeah. Let's right show now? that to the people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was incredible. We had this footage of him. This is just a couple months ago. He had this massive media day. All these people there to see him. Tons of media in Ecuador. Um, yeah, there it is. I mean, look at this. Superstar. Superstar. I mean, these are kids coming up to him. Now, do you think they all knew who he was? Or do you think someone was like, this is a famous guy. Let's get a picture. Oh, you never yeah. know sometimes, like the, you know? The fame effect. Like everyone starts just mobbing. Something. They just want to put it on their Snapchat. I don't know, dude. This is, this is Ecuador. This is where he is from. Right. I feel like people know who he is. I wonder how he's going to look, because every time I talk to Cheeto, he looks different. Look at this. <laughs> I mean, he's just being mobbed here. I know. When I was doing research for the show, I, I was going back through his Instagram. I like the beard. The beard is tremendous. The beard, I think he looks much better with the beard rather than clean shaven. Yeah. Short hair beard. I'm hoping for a bucket hat today. He, <laughs> rocks, he rocks the bucket hat well. He's got, by the way, impeccable style great style i love the uh it's a bold move but he pulls it off the uh the wallabies with uh shorts yeah he's always got like uh he's got like short shorts baggy shirt i love that style i mean love the style he's the man but he always looks different he's like gary tonin every time i see him always looks different i mean look at this guy he's holding kids and signing (laughs) at the same time Left hand signing. I mean, right this hand. is like actual mobbing. He's yes. really getting mobbed. He's like uh, Ringo Starr coming home. Now imagine, he's out. Imagine if he comes back with a belt. It's a whole compilation here. By the way, he looks different here than he did in the previous <laughs> clip. <laughs> That's how often he changes this his look. Three, three hours later. Yes. Now it he's lit- got a fade. He literally got a fade. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, it's amazing. Every time I see him, he looks different. Look at this. This guy can't go anywhere. Wouldn't it be uh, great? Crazy, man. I would love it if they played, you know, if they did a show in uh, in Ecuador. I don't know oh what kind gosh. of venue situation yeah, they got over be, there. I feel like that would be tough. That's the one thing that we don't get enough of in the UFC. Obviously, huge promotion. Everyone comes away looking like a star. But there's not enough of those local shows. And at this point, I mean, he's such a big star. Maybe it doesn't make sense. But it would be super cool to see him headline a show over there. Who who else can we put on there? Michael Morales is he Ecuadorian? Mm, he's somewhere. And I'm afraid I don't want to offend anyone. Get HR on us or something. <laughs> he is from Ecuador. Oh, he is all right. There's another one from Ecuador too. Another fighter from Ecuador. You know what's funny? Uh, so my my wife does uh, a lot of shipment stuff from our house. So the same UPS driver comes every day. And he's from Ecuador. Oh, nice. And he's a gigantic fan, like hardcore fan of MMA. Cheeto. No, oh, of just MMA. MMA. This is everything. Like he like I would imagine he likes Cheeto though. He likes Cheeto a lot. But we were always talking. So when it comes to a Cheeto fight, then you know, things get uh ramped up. Uh but he told me that uh he uh I think Morales trained with his coach or something like that. Anyway, we always talk about the Ecuadorian MMA scene and uh it seems to be booming. But there's another, There's. There, I think there's a female fighter. Is there a female fighter from Ecuador? I mean, there's someone from Ecuador that he's always talking about. Morales is a good call. Another one of my picks from a couple of weeks ago. Huge favorite. <laughs> yep. Um, 
I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, I'm, all, I'm only seeing... Those two? Yeah. UFC did an article, the future of Ecuadorian MMA is in good hands, and it was Cheeto and Michael Morales. Well, there's your main and co-main right there. The, I mean, let's see. Biggest arena in Ecuador, biggest stadium in Ecuador is, well, it's the football club, 59,000. Let's go. <laughs> Someone, someone tuning in for Juliana Pena right now, uh, watching us is book it? UFC Ecuador. <laughs> no, no, no. This is Dominic Cruz's <laughs> slot. <laughs> Fifty nine thousand people. Let's go. There it is. I'm sure it would sell out. Estadio Monumental Banco Pish Pishnish Pishinish. Yeah. I mean, Shido signed fifty nine thousand autographs just in that video alone. It'd sell out instantly. I agree. The f oh, here's another article. The five biggest stadiums in Ecuador. Let's go. Let's get deep. Uh, Monumental Banco Pichinichia, uh, Modelo <laughs> Alberto Spencer, 42,000. The White House is there. That's what it's called? Yes. Uh, 41,000 people. George Capwell, 40,000 people. I mean, they got some big stadiums in Ecuador, just for the record. 35,000 at the Atahulpa Olympic. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at this right now. They most of them are stadiums. Can yeah. we do a stadium show or do we need I, an arena? I feel like we could do a stadium show. There's also mm, capital. Uh, suffice to say, I mean, I feel like we were very dismissive of UFC Fight Night Ecuador, and I feel like it could actually be a thing. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to get a message from someone on Instagram. How dare you not give Ecuador the respect? I mean, no, we're giving the respect. Just keep listening. Someone just sent me a picture of... Uh, <laughs> You see this picture I'm talking about? Is it Mike? What was the guy's name? Who fought Huntsucker? Oh, Corey Moon. Yeah, Corey Moon. <laughs> Saying want to grab an app and drinks at Applebee's with that picture. I mean, come on. How do you put that picture up? Tapology, you did him dirty, all right? Can we not get a can we not get a, like a weigh-in picture or something? Sometimes the tapology ones are hilarious. All right, it looks like Dom is sizing up right now. Oh, thank you, Dom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking the same Appreciate thing. Appreciate I'm thinking the same thing. Yeah. He's good to go. You could take a break now. I have to keep going. Uh, but we love it. Let's talk about this main event. This is very exciting stuff. It's always great when we have the man, the myth, the legend, the incomparable, the inimitable, one of the smartest human beings in the history of the sport join us. And now he's fighting in five days in his adopted hometown of San Diego. What a treat this is. The one and only Dominic Cruz, kind enough to join us. There he is. What's happening, Dom? How are you? Going on, Ariel. All right, we got a lot to discuss. Big week for you, Dominic. How did you feel when they? By the way, can you can you can you help me out? I was kind of annoying you about this. True or false? Original plan wasn't San Diego for this fight. Am I wrong or am I wrong? I actually don't know, man. I don't know where they were going to have it. I was just um, trying to set a date. I, a date was important to me more than the place. I wanted it to not be, uh, I wanted it to be in front of fans and I wanted a date where I felt healthy and got my rounds in and I got that. So it ended up just being in San Diego. I don't know if it was just perfect timing or what, but it worked out. So this is all perfect for you. The date that you wanted, the city, obviously you don't have to travel, right? How far do you live from that stadium, that arena? Um, about, about 15 minutes on, oh my on a good traffic day. And I train, I train one block from there. Oh my gosh. Wow. I can walk, I can walk to, to, to the arena where I train. Are you staying at the hotel? Um, I want to see the hotel first. <laughs> yes. You never really know where they're going to put us, yes. but, um, we'll see, you know, I'm not going to say anything other than that. We'll see where it's at. And then I'll decide. I do like, I do like being in, in that scenario, though. So I, I, there's a good chance I will, yeah. So uh, you like the date, uh, obviously the city. What about the opponent? How did you feel about the opponent? You know, it, in the end, you got he's ranked higher than me. That was the goal. Yeah. I wanted somebody ranked higher than me. And um, when you get the reason is when you get somebody ranked higher than you, you're going to face them in the near future anyway. So on your way up the ladder, you got to face these guys. So, yeah, that's fine. It wasn't like a preference on the person as much as the date, um, being around fans, and somebody ranked above me. All those things happen. I'm a happy camper. I'm doing the best I can here. Were you hoping for title shot? Were you holding out hope? 
I didn't. I don't really have an expectation of that because can't. You got to just kind of show up and do your job. Right. Um, Marlon, as of late, I mean, you you, you study, you know the sport. You know, like, would you consider him a step up from the guys that you fought in your last two fights? I would, because um, of his streak and his confidence right now from his wins, it makes him very dangerous. Impressed? Of course. Yeah. I mean, I've called a few of his fights. Um, I'm very impressed with him and his his rise and how he's shown up. You know, he's going to be a, a a great adversary to prepare me for the rest of the line. I mean, if you look at the line above him, it doesn't get any easier. Right. <laughs> That's for sure. So it's like anybody in the top 10, it's not like literally anybody in the top 10 is super difficult. You just have to um, deal with different weapons, different skill sets and, and adjust to that. You guys cool? I'm cool with him. Who knows what he's thinking? I try not to, um, I try not to worry about that. I just try to be me. You know, you can only control, I can only control myself. I've seen him. I've worked alongside him a million times and there's never been, I mean, he always had a little bit of like, uh, he would always kind of come around and like poke at me. Okay. But it wasn't, I just never really bit because I'm not really attached. It, It doesn't, I'm just here one day at a time being what I got to be to make it work every day. And if this is it, this is it. If he doesn't like me, I can't control that either. I mean, I'm just, I got no problem with him. I have respect for him. I love what he's done. I've seen him um, on the bottom of the division, rise to the top. How can you not respect that? By the way, when you say poke, do you mean like physically poke or just like say things that try to get under your skin? That. Uh, Like what? I don't know. Just annoying stuff. that done to you, Eric? No, everyone's so nice to me. Everyone's so nice to me. (laughs) The best best way I could put it is kind of like, think of um, Rampage Jackson in you. Ah, I said, well, that's a good one. That's a good, okay. It's not, it's not like specific, but it's kind of like, poke, poke. Do you feel like they made this fight in order for him to get the win over the legend? Or do you feel like it's like equal footing? I don't know what the UFC is thinking. Um, I try not to jump into my interpretations because that's where you, you, got, you got no peace in those. I try to stick to the facts. I don't really have a factual answer for that, so I'm, I, I don't know what to tell you. But it's easy to fall into an interpretation on that if you want to. That's for sure. What, what would that interpretation be? Good question. What do you think it is, Ariel? Well, historically, like the classic Joe Silva fight was always like the young up-and-comer, youngish up-and-comer against the legend that's how you get the the young guy over, right? You put the legend in there. But the thing is, you're not on like a losing streak. You're on a winning streak. I mean, so the, I actually, because I don't think it applies to this fight, if I'm being honest, for two reasons. You're on the winning streak, you're at home. Uh, if it was him at home, try to make him into a star off of you, then I would say yes, and you're on the losing streak. It's not the case. I actually feel like this is like an appropriate two guys. Obviously, you've been around way longer, but you're at similar spots in the division. So I don't feel like there's any sort of hidden agenda here. You know what I'm saying? Well, I did that 100%. All right. <laughs> I heard you say that you feel like he's always mad. It looks like that to me, but... He seems like, like a happy-go-lucky also, guy, no? Well, may, I don't know. Just look at his interviews talking about me. He doesn't seem yes. very happy-go-lucky about me. He was on this so show and he was that. talking about you. He was very upset. He was very fired up. He thought you yeah, didn't want know. to fight him. And here you are. Yeah. It's easy to fall into interpretations. How do you feel about... That's what this sport does. What do you mean? Well, that's what happens. I mean, you got you to gotta remember, it's not clear communication between fighters as it, as it could be. So um, you've got a matchmaker, you've got managers. Who knows what the matchmaker is saying to the manager? Then who knows what the manager is saying to the fighter? Right. Whereas I represent myself. I talk to the matchmaker directly. Um, so it's like, I'm pretty clear. I never, I just, I told you, I want the date. I want somebody ranked above me and I want the, and that's it. And if the date doesn't align with the timing of the person, I could see how they might think that I don't want to fight them, but maybe they just want to fight at a different date than I do. Right. So it's okay. I can't blame the guy for thinking that way if that's what he wants to think, but it's not necessarily true either. Cause obviously we're here. You didn't always manage yourself, right? 
Um, I don't necessarily manage myself. I just represent myself is the best way to put it. That's fair. Um, I, I communicate for myself. But it, would that, was that always the case? Like you've been dating back to when you were a champ? No, I've had to learn. I've been in the game for 16 plus years. So it's like after a while, you build some relationships with people and you understand, you know, I've got a good relationship with Sean Shelby in the sense of communication. Mm. If he wants to talk to me, he can reach out to me. And I think a lot of us fighters can do that with Sean Shelby whenever we want. You just got to have the webos to do it Mm. because he's a talker and he knows how to get under your skin and he knows how to throw this guy at you and, you know, so, but with Shelby and me, we are pretty, pretty clear line communication. And, and with that, I can get to the point and here we are. Would you uh, recommend for most fighters to have that kind of relationship? Like rather than having a middleman or woman? Well, I think in the UFC, we're signed to a six fight contract. Are we not four fight contract right. usually Yeah, at the lowest? So why would I pay somebody for four fights when it's set after one? Right. That doesn't make sense to me. And then on top of that, with a manager, how how are they supposed to be bringing me in sponsors if the UFC dictates the sponsors? So now UFC dictates the sponsors and UFC dictates the contract. So what is a manager actually doing? They're, they're just talking and creating the communication. And what managers are good at, from my experience, is making it seem like they have all the hookups. But in the UFC, what hookups can you get when the right. UFC makes the for you now if you're in bellator if you're in pfl if you're in any of these other organizations it makes perfect sense for me for to me for a fighter to have a representation because sponsors can get brought they can build relationships elsewhere they can have a lineup of of like 10 fighters and because one manager has a lineup of 10 fighters sponsors might come to them directly and say hey do you have anybody so then it makes sense but in the ufc how many sponsors are even allowed in the ufc very few and they're already decided by the UFC. So the UFC sponsors who they want. And the UFC um, makes the contract. So for me, after one, after the manager um, renegotiates my contract from one fight, I feel like I'll pay them on that. And then from there, I can do the communication from, from myself because it's already the, the contract set. It's only going to go up a certain amount each fight from there. And that's already dictated after the first conversation. So managers really only having one conversation and it's getting, and it's getting paid out for four fights. That doesn't make sense to me. How close have you ever gone to fighting out your contract? Um, pretty close. Really? Yeah. Twice. When was yeah. that? I renegotiate my contract. Um, when I get within one or two fights of the end of it, generally, um, I try to, if, if the UFC is open to it and they've always been willing to work with me. Um, I just don't talk like a prick. (laughs) You mean like make it public or to them as, as a prick? Yeah. Yeah. Just don't either or right. Like don't, you know, just, if you want to, it's really easy. If you just talk to the, talk to Hunter, talk to Sean Shelby, they're very open to listen to you. If you can create the conversation from a neutral place, Mm -hmm. it's when you come at them all crazy. I deserve this. You just got to come from a neutral place. Nobody deserves anything. You earn everything you get in this sport. So you got to understand they're running a business. I've been doing this so long. I've watched the UFC build themselves from Spike TV to Versus to Fox to ESPN. Like I know what they've done. They're worldwide. They're international. Like it's, it's incredible. The business model that they've, that they built into sold to WMG, uh, WME, IMG or whatever yep. that long acronym is. Um, just the steps that they've taken. How can you not respect the UFC as a business that they're pretty, they're pretty smart. Do you watch other MMA too? Yeah. Or I don't know. Like there's some guys who are like, Ugh, if I'm not working it or fighting on the card, I want nothing to do with it. You enjoy watching, like just being a fan and watching. I am a fan. I'm definitely a fan. I've said this on other interviews. I'm really a fan of everybody in the UFC. I'm a fan of all and then mixed martial arts because I'm a martial artist. Um, it might be hard to understand that because I still fight, but you know, as a commentator too, you kind of have to be a fan. Right. Uh, if you're not, 
and then you're kind of making it about you from my perspective and and being a commentator isn't about you it's about the athletes that's really important to me because i've been on the other side as a fighter where the commentator is just talking and they have no idea what i'm doing because they haven't watched any film and they're just saying what they think so it's like you got to do the work in the sense of knowing what these athletes are doing and the work that they put in and the, the strategies do the best. I, I try to do the best I can to understand the strategies that they're implementing by watching. And I have to watch from a fan's perspective, which is a beginner's mindset an open perspective, not a, I already know, not a place of knowledge, but a place of like transformation so that I can hear what they have and, and ingest it. Not just think that I know it all already before I watch them. Because if I know everything before I watch them, then there's no space to learn what they're teaching me to explain their styles. Do you like, you know, like you guys do those meetings and stuff like that, those uh, fighter meetings? Do you like picking their brain? Do you like talking to the fighters? I do. You do? I do, yeah. I enjoy it because I enjoy doing it one-on-one more. I used to do it one-on-one with the clipboard and I remember talk to them. You would show up to the media and day. Yeah, I, I like doing that better because I feel like they talk to me better. When you get the big group, you got people who are on there that are turning their phones off and they're moving and it just kind of takes away the intimacy of the connection of the relationship building process of the athlete. And sometimes you don't get the same information, but that's just my experience. It's not a fact either. No. Um, DC turns his phone off for sure. DC turns his phone off. Could He could. <laughs> <laughs> I just threw in the pot. I'm just kidding. Um, what about? Oh, I'm not you, Stern. No, oh, come, come on. on. What, what about the uh, the the like the rules meeting that you guys had, the seminar, whatever you want to call it? Was that was that effective in your opinion? Well, um, effective. I think it was effective for the person who set the meeting because they wanted it to be effective. So for them, if it was effective, it was effective. For me, where I stood, I feel that um, there's, a, there's a man that was on the phone, didn't show up and just talked to us, didn't even have his face on there and just talked to us through a microphone and told us that we were to just trust the people that were reading the analytics and that we were supposed to trust that those people reading the analytics understood the sport, but we didn't get to see them, know who they are, know anything about them. To me... It's like you can have the biggest, baddest gadgets on earth, but if the people reading the move can't understand what the move is, what's the point of pushing the button to say what it is? Do you see what I'm saying? Like yeah. if it's a takedown, but the person's watching the fight doesn't know what a takedown is. They can push takedown, but they didn't even know what it was. So I'm supposed to just trust that these people behind this make pushing for the analytics know what they're doing, but um, the proof is in the results. And uh, Did you learn anything? Yeah. I learned that um, we are to trust <laughs> some higher power that knows everything. You remember, that's you, it. Last time you were on the show when we were talking about like officials and stuff, I got a call from Mike Mazzulli. You know Mike Mazzulli? He's the head of the ABC commission. Oh, he was mad at me. He was like, why didn't you do this? Why did you? Dom saying this. Da, 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 da. You were talking about the people who don't have uh, you know, a background and all that. You, remember, you know what I'm talking about? He was not happy about that. Do you ever That's hear from him? No, I mean, I don't know what there would be to not, not, I don't know why he wouldn't be happy. He can jump on this show anytime he wants and put his face up there and say what he wants to say anytime. And I, from what I understand, I don't think you'd have a problem with that. So um, on top of that, what's there to defend if nothing's going on? Well, yeah, maybe. I mean, I didn't offer him the spot on the show, but maybe I, are you saying I should? Maybe that's, what, maybe that's what he wants. Maybe yeah. let him... We have him on when I'm on here. I'll be happy to talk to him. You would do that? You would debate him? Oh, that would be incredible. Oh my gosh. In a heart. Can we do that? Sure. Oh my God. That would be incredible TV. You debating the head of the ABC? Let's go, Mike. All right. The challenge has... I'd be, happy to hear you out. I'd be happy to hear you out from a neutral space. Let's see if you can do that too. All right. So after this fight, we'll set it up. Okay. Uh, how do you feel about San Diego? You haven't fought in the UFC in San Diego. Last time was WC days, right? You like Some people don't like fighting close to home. There's pressure. There's people asking for tickets, blah, blah, blah. How do you feel about it? Yeah, you take a deep breath. Yeah, I just saw it. Everything you just said is very true, very real. 
But, you know, in this position, I always try to look at it from a different framework, which is I belong to the people. When you choose to, to fight and do this, you belong to people. To, to an extent, you can choose to resist it or you can choose to belong to the people. And when, you know, I belong to the people to an extent. So um, how do I make it about them? I do the best I can to be what I need to do to make it work. And that's just take a deep breath. And uh, when they ask for tickets, let them know I don't have any. And they can go online and get them. I feel like you're in a very zen-like state right now. This is, uh, I, I like this, Dom. Thanks. I just, I'm trying to just be present because, you know, you can't really, like I said, you can't control the, the ultimate illusion for us is control, right? We think we control these things. Like you said about these people, if I was trying to control all these people, if I was trying to control them calling me, I can't. So it's like, I mean, just got to kind of surrender to it all and just let it happen and adjust as it comes. Because otherwise, I'm going to get all wound up. And what's the point of all that? Um, just got to let go of control. Have you always been this way on the Monday before a fight? Or is this something that's developed over time? I think it's definitely developed over time. I'm older. I've been through a lot of ups and downs. Ariel. I've lost. Mm -hmm. I've been a loser. I've been a winner. I've been a champion. I've been um, a prelim main eventer. I've been every position you could possibly be from the bottom of the ladder to the top of the ladder. And the consistent thing that I know is that you see the same people up on uh, the same people on the way down as you do on the way up. Hmm. So just be, be the best you can for the people around you. Cause um, you're going to see those people again. It, nothing's forever except that you're going to pay taxes and be dead in the box at the end of this thing. Those are the only things that are consistent. Everything else can be taken away from you. Marriage, your wife could leave you. You, um, girlfriends, your girlfriend could leave you. Every, nothing's permanent. Nothing. Right. So what's the point of trying to control it? Wow. Who helped you develop this mindset? You have to just dig deep, man. No help? No it's nothing? In, it's, in all, it's in all of us. Um, but you got to search. You know, what do they say? The, um, when the student is ready, the teacher will, uh, you know, the teacher will show itself, to, you know. Uh, people, I have good wise people that I, I reach out to that are much older than me that have been through a lot that I, I talk to and, um, mentors. Yeah, of course. Of course you have to have those, especially with all the pressure that we carry. Like you said, it's real. I think the biggest thing is for me has been vul being vulnerable enough to ex uh, express that I need help and mm -hmm. then getting it and reaching out to people that are wiser than me in a lot of different areas, but everybody's got their own, um, expertise. Right. So like if I wanted expertise in how to build uh, a show from scratch all the way to the top, I would reach out to my friend Ariel. If I wanted to, if I wanted to learn how to be the best, mis the best mixed martial arts in the world, I'd reach out to somebody else. If I wanted to learn how to find peace through everything where we think we're, um, where we're overwhelmed, then I reach out to another person. So it's like, you got to find those people in each Avenue and just try to tap in the best you can. I'm really good at that. When did you first reach out for help? When I, if you could go date all the way back to our interview where I cried after I blew my knee out, mm. that was the very beginning of a very long line of rough years. My twenties were really rough. I made them really hard on myself. Um, trying to control everything. One of the consistent um, mindsets for the past 18 months, two years for me has been surrender, as weird as that sounds. But what the, the key thing about surrender is it's not just giving up. A lot of us like tap into that, think it's like giving up. Um, the key to surrendering is that you actually get to receive at the end of it when you do. Like what comes after you surrender to things? You know, you're not trying to control everything. So when you just finally let go, now what can you receive? is the next stage you know if we're at war and i i wave the white flag and i surrender it's not over i still got to receive what's coming after that white flag it could be torture it could be a brand new house it could be anything right mm. um so i've just learned to receive a lot of the stuff that comes with that and the biggest thing is not controlling is really giving me a lot of peace especially in a week like this like i can't control any of it i can't control vera how he feels about me 
I can't control the UFC, their organization that's going to do what they want. If they want to put me here in, in the interpretation that you put me, they will. I can't control that. Um, just let go and just let it be what it's going to be because otherwise I'm just going to wind myself up trying to just chill, man. Enjoy this ride. It's pretty epic to get this place to be. Um, it's an, it's been a very emotional ride for me to get these opportunities. Uh, just especially with the losses that I've felt when you feel those losses and then you get back on a win streak, I just feel so grateful. Man, this is beautiful stuff. I really appreciate you uh, you sharing this with us. Do you live with regret? Everybody has um, a little regret uh, somewhere, but I don't have regret now. I, you know, like you just got to let go. What's the point of it? Like regret, what is that? It's like lack of forgiveness mm. of yourself, shame, Right. I mean, that's what I see it as from my experience. So what do I have to be ashamed of? What do I have to be, um, to not forgive myself for? I've, I've dealt with those things. By the way, switching gears, are you surprised O'Malley's fighting Jan? No, that just tells me that he got a, he, he renegotiated his contract. He's getting paid. <laughs> that's all that means. That's it. It's simple. It's like he wasn't facing the best of the best because he wasn't getting paid to fight the best, the best yet. Now he is. Who do you think wins that one? It's a good question, man. Um, I think the experience factor obviously goes to Jan. And when you watch what Vera did to O'Malley, you got to give credit to that. He finished him. He, he really did. Nobody talks about it because O'Malley's got a way with words to make it seem like he's undefeated, but he lost that fight. And um, when you look, the proof is in the results, but it's not MMA math. Like he's got a reach advantage. He's got good footwork. But Jan, I mean, if you look at the way he keeps his defense tight, it's going to be, it's going to be a really good fight. What, what makes it a super good fight is it's three rounds. O'Malley can really, O'Malley can keep his pace and keep on his bike with his range for three rounds. And that'll support him with his range and his southpaw stance. Um, what supports Jan to me is he can switch stance. He can go southpaw or conventional at any time. And he, as we saw with him versus Aldo, he's efficient in both stances equally defensively. So I think defense wins that fight. Whoever has the better defense in that fight wins is what I believe. So we'll see how it goes. What about uh, TJ Aljo? I could Aljo? be calling it though, so I don't know. Okay, okay, huh? yeah, fair. I know. TJ Aljo. Um, that's a tough one too. Like, um, like I said, I don't know. It's, it comes down to TJ stuffing takedowns, which before he fought me, he had a hundred percent takedown defense. So I think that why would that not continue? I think he would be really good takedown defensively. And then if you keep Aljo on his back foot and pressure him being TJ, I think he can do really well against Aljo, but Aljo's big. He's, he cuts a lot of weight. He's very strong. And, um, it's, that's like a, a, a race, but you see what he did to, um, to Jan. It's a very similar style fight. And that fight was a toss up, right? But you can't really sleep on, on Aljo. If he gets a takedown, he can control you the whole round and then just take a whole round from you. So that's a tough fight for both those guys. I'm excited to watch it as a fan. Right. And you may be calling it if it's on that same card, by the way, your five rounds this time. It's been a minute since you did five rounds, right? How do you feel about that? Yeah, it's this is a title fight, you know. Um, they say that it's not, but it is. When you fight five rounds, that's a title fight in my book, mm -hmm. period. So I'm fighting, the way I look at it is I'm fighting Vera for the title right now. That's just how, I, that's how I'm seeing it. This is a title fight for me. I mean, it feels like maybe one away. By the way, uh, Vera's coming up next on the show. Um, I don't know if you want to. Of course. Why? Why, of course? You guys. That's what you, because you're, that's what you do, man. What do you mean? You're smart. Oh, okay. This is, it says. You, this is not sorry. You're about to fight each other. You, this, you guys are the biggest names in the sport right now. This week, it's all about Dom and Vera. Exactly. Why wouldn't you have us back to back? That makes sense. You want to talk to him? Is that what you're saying? 
I don't have any problem. I'm going to see him on Wednesday. I, I have know. no beef with him. I know. I, I was trying to, I, actually, I feel like you're in a very kumbaya state right now. It's uh, like, it's actually making, it's very, like you're very Zen, very happy, very, I, I don't know. I feel like you're in just a great spot. This, this warms my heart. Um, I can hear them in the background. I don't know if everybody oh. else can hear them. Oh, I can't even hear. Are they talking? <laughs> oh, they were, yeah, they were. I could hear them talking. Oh, no. Your control. Um, anyways. Did you so, hear what I said? Me off no, what did you oh, say? Oh, I was saying, this warms my heart. It feels like you're in a great spot mentally. It feels like you're happy. You're content. You're, you know, you're chilling. It's five days. I would be very stressed. I'm not you, obviously, but it, this is a nice window into your brain, your soul, before a huge fight. First time in San Diego, you're the king of San Diego in MMA. You've been there for God knows how long, well over a decade. Gives me a little WC vibes. I mean, I love everything about this. Thanks, man. This is great. Well, I'm going to set up you and Mazzuli. He might have texted yeah, me no right problem. now. No, he didn't. I no problem with that. Um, I don't know why he was so angry about them. Like, oh, he was, he was fired up. He was fired up. It'll be interesting to hear about that. Like, if if that anytime somebody gets fired up like that, it's because I said something that's true. <laughs> that he already thought. <laughs> I think he didn't like the, the, the insinuation that they don't have a history, that they don't train. You know, uh, who are these guys to tell me, you know, that type of stuff. Okay, well, let's hear about it. He can tell me how great they are when he talks to me. I think it would be really interesting because he, I mean, he's been in the sport for a very long time. I don't know if you know about his history, Mohegan, ABC. You're one of the brightest minds, but you you have strong conviction. You have very strong, you're not going to be swayed easily. Uh, so I think that you're the right, you're the man for the job, if you ask me. I, By the way, I would even venture to say, I don't know the answer to this. I didn't ask, but like, I feel like even at that seminar that you guys did, you weren't just taking everything that they were giving you. You were asking questions. You were raising your hand. Is that accurate? Yeah, I asked one question <laughs> and they literally wrote me off and said, no, we don't need you to go over that and then change the subject. Oh, that's how gosh. I knew that. That's how you know that it's like they're not open. So, you know, I'm open to learn from Mike Mazzuli. The question is, is he open to learn from me? Uh. If we can come from a place of neutrality and learn from one another. Now we can move together. That's all I want. I'm not here to be right. I'm here to be with. You can't, if you're, if you're there to be right, you're on an island all by yourself and nobody can be there but you. Is Mike Mazzulli on island or is he trying to be with somebody and we can learn from each other and grow the sport together? That's what's important. We'll find out. Uh, for now though, we'll find out Saturday who's the better man, Dominic Cruz, Chito Bear. One of my favorite main events of the year. I can't wait. I love everything about it. I appreciate you very much, Dom. Good luck to enjoy the week at home. Thanks. And uh, thank you for doing this as always. Great to talk to you. Yep. Have a good day. There he is, Dominic Cruz, former WC and UFC bantamweight champion. What a legend. And without further ado, let us say hello to the man uh, who will be fighting Dominic Cruz in his hometown of San Diego, his adopted hometown, the pride of Ecuador, one Marlon Cheeto. Vera. Ah, uh, there he is. Hello, Marlon. <laughs> I tried to have a moment there with you two guys, but it didn't really work out. Um, yeah, well, call him back. No, it's, I think it's okay. I w <laughs> <laughs> he said he's going to see you on Wednesday. Yeah, we have a sit, a sit down interview, I guess. Face oh. to face. Ooh. Ooh, who's that for? For ESPN? Who fucking knows? Who fucking knows? Yeah. They, you want you want you want, you want me to ask them to put you in there in the middle? I listen. If they want the views and the ratings, you call Hiwani. Let's. I mean, we all know that. Oh wow! I, I, I like I like the confidence. I love it. Hey, uh, oh. Dom had nice things to say about you. Yeah, good for him. I, I don't have a problem with him. Like, let's put it like that. People get it twisted. Just because I keep it real in a way, like, you're not my fucking friend. Like, I'm not going to, you know, hold dicks with you and fight. We're going to be like, oh, my brother, the best man will win. And I don't I don't see it like that, dude. Fighting is a fucked up thing to do for a living. So, you know, all my friends are going to be there. My closest people is going to get in the cage with me. My family, my wife, my kids will be there. My dad, my mom. So that's the people. You know, um, you know, Ty, I don't have anything against no one. 
This is not about Dominic. This is not about my last opponent or my future opponent. I just don't give a fuck. We are fighters. We're going to get in a fucking cage and one man is going to make half of their paycheck. There's no, there's anything friendly in fighting. So I don't know if I really hurt his feelings or he get weirded out with me. I'm a professional, you know, I, I respect everybody, but if you are about to fight me or we up or we can fight, I'm not going to be nice to you. So I'm going to be nice to my people. I'm going to be nice to Hawani. I'm going to be nice to the people around the, the employees at UFC, you know, from the guy that fucking mops the floor to the guy that tell me how much money I'm going to make. I treat everyone the same because that's how I want to be treated. But if me and you are fighting, that's a different story. Fuck you. I'm not your friend. I, from my heart, I want to do everything to beat you. And I work so hard that I can only expect something good. And it's still a chance that you are still not successful because that's that's how fucked up life is. You can do everything right. It's still a chance you can lose. So there's nothing against the guy. There's nothing against nobody. But th- that's the man in front of me. And I, I got to work. I got to get on top of him. Fair to say, biggest, Simple. biggest fight of your career? Fuck, hard to say that with Jose Aldo, dude. But I feel like uh, the stage, right? Like main the, event, uh, San Diego, yeah. all that stuff, you know? At the moment, at the moment, is the biggest fight of my career. Is the one that I, have, that, that I have in front of me right now. You know, is a guy that held, held the bear for a long time. Didn't fought a lot but hold it for a long time and double easy champion. So yeah, the biggest fight today, yes. Like back in the day, if I would have told you you're going to fight Dominic Cruz, you know, like when you're a young kid coming up in this business, probably, you know, you're thinking, you know, that the fact that he outlasted all these guys, right? With all the injuries, the fact that like Faber is gone, Benavidez is gone, all these dudes are gone. He's still around. It's pretty amazing. It's amazing. It's cool. And... It's also my have the opportunity to put a stamp of, on him and move forward and, uh, and go grab that belt. So it's it's a great opportunity. It's a fucking huge stage. Many events in San Diego, back to back many events. This doesn't happen all the time. This doesn't happen like that. So I'm gonna do everything in my power to come out victorious, and I'm prepared. I train my fucking ass off. I didn't take anything from granted i didn't think just because i look phenomenal last fight i'm gonna look phenomenal this fight this is another fight this is another opponent i went from zero to a hundred so i'm prepared people people expect me to be a thousand percent ready on saturday night there's there's nothing there's no insurance plans there's no excuses i'm ready to go and i'm willing to die to win this fucking fight God, I love this fight so much. It's one of my favorite fights of the year. By the way, true or false? Come, you, you, I know you, you. You'll tell me the truth. Was this not supposed to be in Boston originally? Tell them, Cheeto. Tell them. They called me. Yeah. To fight. Piotr Jan, on Boston, Massachusetts, August thirteenth. Thank you. Piotr Jan, that fat con, declined the fight because he was eating pizza in Italy. And he said, like, oh, I don't have time to make the way. I don't, ha- I don't have time to prepare. If I'm that easy money, why you just don't say, fuck it? I, I finished my slide and kick your ass. But he declined the fight. He said he want to fight in November, October. So I was like, you ain't that cool to wait for you, buddy. So I was like, I need, I want action. I want to fight. I want to make money. Come on, let's go. And they went, well, he declined. Now we move. We you want to fight Dominic Cruz? I was like, sure, why not? And then I, I, you know, why I'm gonna lie? There's no lies. In, when you speak the truth, dude, you don't need to remember anything. So, yeah, that's, right. that's what happened. That's right. That's not shit talking. That's not beef between me and the Russian fat guy. He <laughs> just want. He just didn't have the time. He was doing a little a little trip in Europe. Good for him, dude. Like. Good for him. Uh, which which fight did you like better? Just as just as equal. Equal. There's 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 no better. There's no less. Dominic's a little old, older. Let's mm. keep it real. He probably won't 
keep up the way John will, but it's still a fist fight, dude. You can broke your pink and you're fucked. You can a cock can change the fight. So I'm not I'm not thinking this is gonna be any easier. I'm fucking waking up every day thinking this is gonna be the hardest, hardest, bloodiest, ugliest fight of my life. But I think like that about every single guy. You can bring the guy, I don't know, that never trained. And I'm gonna take it as serious as that because this is serious. This is not a game. So that's why I work so hard. But for me, they were just as equal. Like just as hard, just as tough. Were you at all surprised when Dom agreed? Because I remember when you were on last time, you were like, this guy turns me down. Screw this guy. Like, were you surprised when he said yes? Well, how you say no to somebody that is ahead of you? Right. Like the winner, the winner of this fight can really fight for the belt. Like he can be a former champion. He can have the name. But, you know, his last two wins was an unranked guy and Pedro Munoz that, that ha- haven't do well lately. Pedro had four losses in a row. Yeah. Well, so, the last one. Do you count the last one as a loss? No, I, I'm counting Frankie, Aldo. Who else? I think it's, I think it's two, one, two, right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can you can get like you can go too far with that with with a decision winner with that, you know. And so he had to take it at this point, and he did declare. I think the I think why he thought we have a beef for anything is because I just say the truth. I'm like, hey, you declined the fight again. Come on, dude, fuck you. But there was nothing against him. I was just fucking putting it out there to see if any other contender want to take it. I called out the whole division. I, I wasn't your show but after Frankie. I'll say anybody, Corey, Marab, Rematch, Aldo. I don't. I'm not picky, dude. I'm not. I don't have that issue. I'm a fighter. I'm gonna fight. Are you a mad guy? He says you 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 seem very mad, bro. I think I smell more than anybody. I, know. <laughs> I just think he's he's a little older, you know. He's you know different age, probably. He's used to, I don't know, people kissing his ass. I don't know. Maybe 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 his last three opponents are very kind. They're like Munoz is a really nice guy. I know Munoz. I like Munoz. I will, I'm happy we don't even fight because we're cool. Casey Kenny, I'm sure he's a nice guy. But I'm like, what he wants? Treat him with respect like a former champion? You won't get that from me. Fuck you. I respect you. That's why I train so fucking hard. But I'm not going to be like Mr. Dominic Cruz. Fuck you. <laughs> do when you <laughs> see him, do you, he says sometimes you push his buttons. You get under his skin backstage at the events. Does this happen? I, uh, but... I ask him, I'm like, I'm like, yo, you want to fight? Let's fight. Like, <laughs> you I, come up to him and ask him I, that. I I ask him before, but I I don't look. I don't. I, I'm not a fucking punk. I, I'm not trying. I'm not trying to do things for the gram. I'm not fucking, you know, trying to put on an, on a on an act. It's like making business. I'm like, hey, you want to fight? Like, come on, I'm here. Like, let's make it easier. If you tell Sean, I tell Sean, we want to fight. We we just skip that fucking you know, long negotiation of like, maybe let me ask him what they works for you. So I'm, I'm a fighter, dude. And when I'm backstage, dude, there's, there's been, and I, you know, you can ask Dana at some point. There's, I go to work on Saturday and some fight fell off. I text Dana like, yo, I'm here. If you want to pay me a little bit, I jump in there and do it for fun. It, I ask about 45 ers and 35 ers I'm like, you know, and it wasn't like big fights. I was like, you know what? Hey, I'm here, dude. You want me to jump in? And he just laughed. He's like, fuck off, you crazy son of a bitch. But I'm like, I've been real. Like, just imagine walk with a couple hundred thousand without expecting it. That's pretty cool, dude. So I'm like, why not? So the couple of times I saw him, you know, I'm not trying to shake his hand and have a conversation. Like, like I'm like, what the fuck is that? I do that to the guy in the door. I do that to the camera guy. I did that to the to my to, to my Mexican friend that is working around. I'm friends with everybody, but if you're in my way class, yeah, fuck, I won't be too friendly to you. Especially if you know if if you're up there and you're a good win. Let me ask you about two fights coming up because you're connected to all these people. Uh, are you surprised that O'Malley's fighting Jan? Not at all. Like Jan was left over, right? Everybody's booked. 
we know that we got the Mirab Aldo in two weeks. We got uh, Sonia Don and Corison Hagen, title fight, myself and Dominic. So he's left alone. Uh, what happened in the fight with O'Malley Munoz was like, you know, that's a shed fight for both guys. Like, no one win. There's nothing going on. Everybody make half of a check. So it's like, yeah, let's use a guy with a bigger name. Let's throw one in there. It's, it, I would do it. If I'm in power, I might be like, sure, you too, go in there. Who wins? I don't know. Well, if you if you if you if you go on performance, if you go and see the last three, four fights of each guy, you know, you you got a guy in Peter Jan, Peter Jan, that is a skill fighter, is tough, was kicking all of his ass in the at the end of the first fight, throw that knee, I don't know how, lost his belt in the rematch, you know, he got control, you know, he lost in control time, which there's no shame on that. That win is a fucking win. So he's fighting at the highest level. In the other side, you know, we can really go opponent by opponent. Almost everyone losing record besides me. And I stop him. And it's like, you know, the skill is there. The talent is there. And I'm sure that at this level, everybody got balls. It's just you haven't shown it. That's why when... When people started saying like, oh, people don't think I'm good. I'm like, no. I think smart fighters, people that have a, a sense of common, of common sense, know you're good. You use fighting C-level competition. Hard to judge that in the UFC. Like if, you, if you're hand-picked since debut until today, and then the only two fights that were hard or test, you didn't pass it. On one, you could stop. On the other one, you eye poke the guy in both eyes. So you can put all this show, you can have this mag, you can, you can have this fan base, you can have everything. You got you gotta still gotta fight. Without fighting, without winning, without earning respect, you're in the back of the line. So in paper is a hard fight, but also you got nothing to lose. You already have insurance plans, you already know, oops. I lost the number one. Or, oops, I knock him out. They are, it's, honestly, is how Jan show up. Is he going to take it serious? Is he going to think it's going to be easy? The mind is a motherfucker. So, we'll see. What it's ab- tricky, but in paper, Jan should beat him up. What about TJ Aljo that same night? Um, I believe TJ got the real fighter mindset like he's gonna come after him and he's a he's a real wrestler like you know I didn't grow up wrestling there's no wrestling in high school I just have a couple scraps in, in races but so I, I see it like this if he stopped the takedowns and he put pressure he can start overwhelming but people can talk shit about Starling I talk shit about Starling just because I don't personally like him but the guy is still a fucking good fighter he get a hold of you He's going to control. He's going to get you tired. I don't think he's too much of a good guy that can hold people down, but he got good transitions to the back. He can he can catch a neck. So it's a good fight too. That one is hard to judge. It's, it's honestly how the momentum is taking, who's putting the pressure, who's making damage. T is not a 28 all either. So we'll, we'll see what happens, you know. What about Marab Aldo next week? Aldo is being successful his whole career against guys with yeah. shitty striking and really good wrestling. Like, I'm not talking shit about Mirab. He's winning fight. He put pressure. He got a gas tank. But he's just throwing a big overhand to the take them. And Aldo's clean. You know, Aldo's clean. Aldo can throw numbers. The only thing at this point is, like, can Aldo hold up? But for three rounds, he can hold up a little bit. I got him pretty tired at the end of the second, but I believe my pressure is pretty good. I believe I can find those shots that can hurt people. Mirab is going to throw crazy punches, spinning heel kicks, fucking... He comes like a fucking hurricane, and then he shots. And he haven't shown that he can hold people down, but he can shoot over and over and over and over. So, Aldo, that's really good against that style of fighter. He did it with Frankie twice. He did it with many guys. So 
if Aldo find a way to don't blow his lungs, he can he can he, he can little by little start popping popping the jab, putting together punches with kicks. But you know, Marab is a fucking hard guy, so if he can just connect one of those big bombs and keep landing pressure, maybe. But Aldo moves moves really good on his feet. I was in front of him, so he he moved pretty well. Have you been told you win on Saturday? You're getting title shot. No, and I don't give a fuck about that. You know, that's that's something I cannot control. It's all about performance at this point. It's all about what you do, right? If you do something really sexy, if you do something like you know, you get the fans standing up, you can jump the ladder. If you get in there and you know, put in a kind of like shitty performance, but still winning. You gotta, you gotta hope those other three fights are shit. But the way I fight and the way I prepare myself, I'm expecting a fun fight. So I'm not, I don't really trip on on those things. Like I'm not. All my energy is in training, recovery, get better, kick some ass. If let's say I go in there and put a fucking clinic and crazy KO and they go ah fuck you we we, we, we give the title to this guy I'm like cool uh, and then I just ask for a meeting and see what we can do get a new contract get a little money I don't know I'm not a guy that likes to deal online like some sure, sure. other idiots that, that go online they're like fuck you then it's like ah that's not gonna work well just you know ask for a meeting give it a kiss on the forehead <laughs> and break bread I just I'm not tripping on that dude I'm I have a hat that says "Don't trip." Mac uh-huh. Miller hat, so I'm not, I'm not focused on on what can happen. I'm, I just know one thing: I'm ready to go. I'm in great fucking spirits. I'm happy with, I'm pleased with my camp. So I'm cool. I see you out there training with Luke Rockhold. You and Luke, man, golly, ripped. That fucker is a beast, dude. I saw you guys that do a race. A yeah, we've been we we sprint together. That motherfucker is he's born with some extra. <laughs> that fucker can go. Wow. And he's a big dude, dude. He's a big dude. Um, I, I have to ask you before I let you go, I have to ask you about the return back to Ecuador. What a scene this was. Wow, it warmed my heart. First, the media that showed up, uh, it was like you were the it president. Was, what was it like? Tell it, me. It was it was another level, dude. You did it surprise it you? It takes I expect that. Okay. I was expecting something crazy because last time I went there, that was after I beat uh, Andrew Ewo in Florida. Okay. I, I was on a, on, on a nice win streak. And dude, it was, I couldn't leave my mother's house. So, you know, all the big fights came after that, you know. The Sonja Don drama, O'Malley, Aldo, fucking the war with Debbie Grant, the blood, Frankie Edgar. Then I show up to Ecuador, dude. It was on another level. And it takes a special mindset to deal with that because that can that can burn any man. That no one knows how to deal with that. Either you know how to deal with that or you just you can handle that. That can fuck with you. And I'm glad I have a good mindset and I don't get my, my mind blurry in the cloud. I just you know I let the people enjoy it. I let the people, you know, have the satisfaction to see me, but to me. My mind is always improve, get better, and have a lot of gratitude with that people. But don't think that's it. That's not it. Saturday night, when the lights are on, the catch is locked. No one from that from from from, from that is gonna do it for you. So you gotta you gotta be ready. You will see careers fall. And that happened right in the past. When people become that, right, they just can't handle it. They think that's gonna do it for them and Fame is just an illusion. Fame is just, you know, I appreciate the love. I, I always said, I, I always thank the people. But, you know, you, you, just, you still got to work. You still got to gotta do the thing of get, get, getting better and, and keep just progressing, moving forward. Because without work, everything's diluted. You have the, the Nino over there, the Nina? Ellie. Say hi. Hey. Hi. Hello. Wow, what a Bobby cutie. Bobby She's saying daddy's gonna win, right? Wow. Oh my gosh. What a hug. 
That is amazing. How old is she? How old are you? ¿Cuántos años? Tres? Cuatro. No. Uh, she tried Almost to, four. She tried to add one to the... <laughs> Does she understand uh, what you don't. do? Not yet. My son and my daughter started to pick up on things like why random people came always to you in the street. And, and I just tell them, yeah, they're friends. But then the natural one, they told me like, wait a minute. <laughs> they're like, yeah, but that guy's not your friend. He don't come to the house to see you. I'm like, okay, you got me. So one day, I kind of explained them like, well, when you win fights, people like you. They you see some TV and things like that. So they're kind of getting it, but they they do get a little overwhelmed. Like when UFC or ESPN come to the house and there's a camera crew, and I'm like, hey kids, we gotta do something for the camera. Like I'm like, you are gonna play, you guys wanna eat ice cream. They get like a little like, ah, yeah, but tell them to leave. I'm like, they're they're friends too. They're like, yeah, they're friends. So it's you, you, I, I try to let them know little by little, and you know, just trying to give my best best example I can to them. Man, you know, it, it's all, all we can do. Make a better version of, of ourselves and them. Amen. I saw you at the school, man. It was amazing. You're holding these kids. You're signing these autographs. That was nuts. These are like high school kids. Yeah, and, and uh, even smaller than them. Like they were yeah. like son age. They were dude. One kid was like, come on, punch me, punch me. I was like, I'm not going to yeah. punch you. He's like, he's like, no, no, I want to be punched by you. And then I was like, I don't know your dad will like that. So I just kind of like, kind of like just touch him in the arm. Dude, they were, they were, I never felt that energy. Not even for adults. Like they were going crazy. They were, they were pulling my shirt. They were like, can, can you put me in your shoulders? I was like, I think you're a little old for that. Dude, yeah. dude they were jumping out of the bus when the boss was kind what? of like driving out, when somebody just yelled my name, they started jumping out of the bus. I was like, holy shit. And I went really undercover. I went like 30 minutes before they came out to pick up my nephews. So no one kind of see me. Dude, it used to take one kid to yell Chito Vera and that per that 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 place get into fire. Like I was just like, oh, what's up kids? And my friends, they were trying to kind of like to move them to go to the car because I got my nephew in the arm and they were, they were like pulling him so hard that he was kind of like, oh, that hurts, that hurts. You know, the, the kid is seven years old, or six years old, sorry. And they was like, I was like, okay, let, let him go, let him go. Like they pulled his shoes away. Dude, it was crazy. Amazing. I couldn't, I can't imagine how that made you feel. You come back home, you have all these kids, these students just grabbing you. So you're holding your nephew, I think it was, you're signing with the other hand. It was amazing. Yeah. It it feels it feels like all the work I put is paying off. And what feels the best about that love is not just is it's not just cool to be famous, but it's like you're doing it right. Yeah. Because you know, adults can get a blurry by a watch, by a car, be like, oh I wanna be your friend. A kid, if a kid like you, it's because you're doing the right thing. So in my heart, in my soul, that was the thing that kind of like was the most gratification. I was like, okay, I'm doing the right things. I'm putting the right examples out there. I know I, I cause a lot in the interviews, and, but it's just my energy. But at the end of the day, when kids love you, it's like when Rocky was running on the streets and all the kids were, were behind. I'm like, you're doing something right. So that just helped me as a dad to keep going. Oh my gosh. She's your daughter is melting my heart here. So she she's she's like she's like the the, the most attached to me. Like we, we we have going for the last four days to the park. And she's like, Can we go to the park? I'm like, we went four times. Like, <laughs> leave me alone. And she's like, No, no, no. But you like the park. I'm like, I know I like the park. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm fighting a couple days. But dude, she she gives the most and she's so energetic she's just like she's good to keep it around i like it around especially when i'm cutting away i told my wife to bring her because she started like like getting on my head oh, wow. and, and the other day she went like she told me everything's gonna be all right i'm like my girl oh my, my girl. god that is amazing you're gonna make me cry uh two two last things and then i'll let you go what is that thing i saw on your instagram there was like a parade and it was like a mini cage 
and it had your name on it. It was like yesterday. I saw on your Instagram. There was some parade in Ecuador. What was that? So in uh, August 7, it's like the kind of like the party of of um, it's like the 800 years of being a city where I'm from. Okay. So they make these like uh, parades with kids from the school and one of the one of the schools decide to build a little cage and put a kid on there throwing punches and kick and put one of the songs that somebody made for me in Ecuador, Jose Victoria. That's the name of the rapper. He made you a uh, song? And they, I have I have a couple of songs. What? Man. Yeah. Shoot, you're big time. Yeah, dude, is hard work pays off, dude. And I feed from that. Like I don't I I really think the best thing you can do is not don't don't let those things get to your head. Yeah. And they just keep coming bigger. So that's what I, that's what I appreciate the most about just keeping a good mindset because it feels so cool to be down to earth and have everything you want in life. That that's what really makes me the most happy because you know we humans sometimes we get fooled by things we get we get, we, we jump in the cloud and and then you're like it just doesn't feel right and it takes a lot of God to figure that out and I'm just glad I have the right people around me you know you know just. Just give me little reminders and, and follow the gods. It's, it's a lot. And that, that thing you saw is uh, happened on August 7. That's like the party of Chone. So it's like, I think like 820 some years of uh, being a city. And they they did that for me. Is that people started tagging me. And, you know, some they have like the, like the, like the, like the, like the UFC shirts with the bear uh, last name on the back and stuff like that. And it was cool. I was surprised. Like, no one told me. That was, was like, amazing. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. And then also in LA was the Ecuadorian parade. And they invited me to be like the captain. I don't know how to call it. To be like on, on yeah, front yeah. Of, the, of the cars. And I was just like, it's a week before a fight. So ah. it's, it's just hard to put my energy into it. Because, it, you know, you gotta, you gotta give love to the people. And that takes a lot of energy. So I was like, hey guys, like, Next time I'm gonna make I'm gonna make it happen. I'm gonna use all this energy on Saturday night, and you guys will be more happy when my when my hand is raised. We were looking before you came on uh, the biggest arenas and stadiums in Ecuador. There's some big ones, the soccer ones, but I feel like a card with you, Michael Morales, throwing a couple other. I mean, this would be a huge deal. I mean, I if... think I think we can make it happen. Yes, and I think they know that they 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 just you know. They're almost waiting for for the perfect time, which again, I don't, I don't trip. Little by little, you will see more talent, more talent. One of my home, one of my friends just just lost in contenders of a decision, wasn't his best performance. I know the kid is good. He will come back. He will figure out how to make it. Michael is kicking ass, and he's coming from a family of athletes like mom and dad are like judo uh, players. So you know that kid is. 23 years old like i'm like when i was 23 i wasn't at that level like right. when i was 23 i was i was kind of like um how i fight like i got thank god i was born with a big set of balls because that was taken until today but at 23 my level was low like i wasn't a very good fighter i just had what is needed and it, that's right here but oh, I I, like him you just keep polishing him, polishing him, polishing him, and you 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 have a monster in that kid. So I'm happy. I talked to him a couple of times. I told him, like, hey, keep focus, keep looking forward. Don't go sideways, don't go backwards, keep moving forwards. Because it's for them, it's like for me when I started, it's like it was new. Now, you know, the road is made. Now every, like they fight, the entire country knows now. Wow. So for them is I, I wouldn't say it's easy because now they have to deal with all the pressure right away because now everybody knows. When I was fighting, it was, you know, family, friends, like, you know, small percentage of people at the beginning in mean, my last first three, four, five, six, small people, you know, getting crazy. Now it's like, it's almost like their fault because yeah. of me. Like, now that's everybody's, because, that's what I was gonna everybody's, say. everybody's... It is because of you. Now, I try. I <laughs> try, but I always tell them, like, hey, keep, Keep going forward. Keep getting better because 
evolution in this game is the most important thing. Uh, you can you can be right. Last thing, are we keeping the beard for the fight? What are we doing? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it. But I, after every fight, I take everything off. I know. And let it grow again. It's like planting a seed, let the tree go, chop it down, going again. Well, I can't wait for this. Thank you for doing this on the Monday before the fight. Good luck to you. A short drive, right? What is it, like two hours away from where you live? Yeah, we're driving out tomorrow morning, getting there and checking in, and then let the let the fight we go. Let's I'm go. excited, man. I'm I'm ready. My my body feels good. My energy is right. My mind is right. So it just it just come down to Saturday night. Who wanted more? And I know that. I already know the que- the the answer of that question. So I just I, I just gotta go in there and do it. Good luck, Cheeto. Thanks for doing this. I wish Thank you the you best, bet. my friend. All the best. Appreciate you. Thank right. you so much. There he is, Marlon Vera. What a fight. Golly, what a fight. I need to check on the uh the website here. Uh, I mean, what what is better than that? Veracruz is some tremendous action. Uh what do we got? Fight center here. I'm looking up, they have the times on the ESPN website, uh, also known as ESPN.com. Oh, main card seven o'clock, guys. That's nice. That's exciting. Main card seven. I don't like those 10 o'clock main card starts. A little late for me, right? Main card seven o'clock. That means main event's going to be like 9 30. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Feel yes. good about that? Love it. Prelims at four? No, 4 30, excuse me. Oh, main card ESPN. Wasn't main card ESPN last week too? I watch on Plus. Yeah, Plus. Uh, Ariane Lipsky against Priscilla Cachoeira. Uh, Ode Osborne, Tyson Nam. Mowgli's back. Martin Boudet. Angela Hill against Lupi Godinez. Uh, what else we got here? Gerald Merchart. Nina Nunez back against Cynthia Calvillo. Devin Clark against Azamat Morzakhanov. Hmm. Yeah, Dominic Cruz, Marlon Vera. What do you guys think of uh, Dom? Very zen-like, right? Very, very zen. He's uh, he's very wise. Would you say kumbaya state of mind? Did he? Do you think he didn't like that? I mean, he laughed at it. Yeah. Do you think I should have pushed more for the head to head? I don't know. You might have been catching Cheeto off guard. That's true. That's true. Um, what did Cheeto? By the way, Dom said he heard you guys talking. Yeah. So what happened? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Were you talking crap Frank over here? No, oh, I, I hit the wrong oh button and ended up talking to. Oh, <laughs> Dom, when I was trying to get Cheeto in. What did you say? Uh, just like, hey, what's up? You know, just hoping he could do a five count for us. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't, but he got the sense, like, we're bringing somebody else on. Oh, no. N- no, no, that Dom probably got that sense. Yes. Um, but he probably also couldn't hear me over you very much. So he probably just heard it as background So He probably thought, is it true that you said, like, hey, I just want to get your uh, your audio checked out so you don't sound like crap like Dom? <laughs> Yeah, that's something I'm like, hey, <laughs> totally gonna win. So, let's by just the way, who, I'm 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 not actually fascinated to know the answer to this question. Who do you like in that fight, Frank? As of right now, this yeah. moment, not my pick for Wednesday. Right. Not even say I'm picking on the main event. Sure, sure. Just right now, you're feeling. I mean, it's rare to get Cheeto. the two Cheeto. Why? The guy's a beast. Is, was there something that he said in the... I know you don't listen for, you know, content oh more for... God. But is there something... <laughs> <laughs> is there something that he said that... Yeah, he definitely... He seems like he's fighting for a lot more than uh, what Dom is fighting for. Mm. What do you think, GC? You agree with that? I don't know. I don't know who's going to win. I don't Torn, know. right? I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's tough. I feel like it's so close. Like, just because it's so close, you play Dom as the underdog. But I don't know. I love it. I, I like it so much I'm considering going to San Diego this weekend. Wow. For like nice. private? <laughs> what do you mean private? PJ? Yeah. I know some people. I know some people. <laughs> what, how does that help when you know some people? Well, that... I know some people in that world, you know? American Jets. Airlines? Yeah, it's, I, <laughs> yeah. I know how to get a hold of them. I, I, know, a good, I, get, I know a good United <laughs> flight at uh, 3.30 on Friday that can get me right in there. Um, well, I can't wait. And uh, obviously on Wednesday's show, we'll talk more and we'll have to make our picks uh, and we'll be joined by some other luminaries that we've spoke about, including Aljamain Sterling. So stay tuned for that. 
but I think it's time to say goodbye. That was really fun having both of them back to back. It's been a while since we had the two headliners back to back, or maybe it hasn't. I can't really remember who was on the show last week, if I'm being honest. Uh, but that was fun. And really, if I'm being honest, 100%, like legit two of my favorite people in the sport. Top 10. I kind of don't want either man to lose. Well, it could be a draw. Could be a draw. I'm rooting for a draw. In fact, for the parlay. This is your pick. Yes. <laughs> draw. Can I do that? Is that a pick? You could pick yeah, a draw, right? You can do that, but nobody's going to write that with the parlay at that point. <laughs> you're not going to do... You're going <laughs> to... If you bet for the main event to go to a draw, no, I will not put my money on the part. <laughs> oh, this is a fish. Wait, is that a thing now? That if we don't like the other person's pick, we're not riding? <laughs> if the pick is the main event ends in a draw, yeah. I'm I thought we're all in this together. We are. <laughs> Unless Except the pick is the main event to go to a draw. Is that the only stipulation? No, if you're just taking something ridiculous. There have been what? times I've asked Connor, like, hey, I'm thinking about this pick. He's like, oh, you could do that, man, but I'm not riding on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I thought it was just we got to ride with whatever we're riding with. Because you're riding on everyone, right? Yeah. What if it's co-main event ends in a draw? Mm, if you add anything to the parlay that's like plus 5,000 or higher, I'm, I'm probably not going to take it. What a draw? I shouldn't have said anything about a draw. By the way, Rick says if the pick will kill the parlay, he'll veto it. Well, all of a sudden he's the judge and jury of this thing? This is a Rickocracy. Yeah, what is this? And by the way, would a draw be plus 5,000? It, w- it would definitely be a lot. It would be in the thousands. All right. I can't pick with my heart. Just make the draw in the h down. Just pick one of them, or don't even pick a main event so you don't feel... Oh, that's right. Draw would be h down, but according to uh, judge and jury Rick over there, you can't pick props on h down. <laughs> Right? We learned that. That is what he says. He did say that. All right. Uh, Okay. We're out of time. Thank you to all our guests, especially Juliana. I love you, Juliana. Come on. She won those uh, ultimate fighter competitions, whatever you call it, and then she got, she turned up. She can fight on uh, UFC Ecuador now. Yeah. On our, our, our make, I mean, I feel like Cheeto's behind it. If Cheeto's behind it, that's that's half the battle. UFC Fight Night at Ecuador. Where would it be? Where's that? Uh, where's like the the? Nah, probably shouldn't do this right now with a minute and a half left in the show. But what's the city? What's the what's the the big city that this event would be at? Frank, you got that for me? Kotokaki. There you go. There it is. Is that a real place? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Okay. Uh, well, there you have it. Oh, that's uh, the biggest city by size, not by population. I'm sorry. What are you looking at Wikipedia right now? <laughs> Sounds like it. I can tell you where it is on the globe. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Why can't we name one place in Ecuador? Because it's like Quito. It's Ecuador. Quito is the capital. Quito. Chito and Quito. How many people live in Ecuador? A lot. Over 2 million? No. Population yes, of Ecuador. 17.6. Wow. I mean, the disrespect. I thought you meant the city center. Oh, uh, right. <laughs> I'm like, that's a lot of people from one city center. Uh, thank you to all our guests. What about Terrence McKinney? He might be a dad. Terrence McKinney might have started the show not a dad. Now he's a dad. We'll get confirmation on that. Thank you to him. Congrats. Thank you to Jeff Neal. Thank you to Jamal Hill. Thank you to Dominic Cruz. Thank you to Cheeto Vera. Thanks to the team. Thanks to all of you. Back on Wednesday, same time and place. Until then, I say peace. Amen. Amen.